Survivor's ready. Go! Trap is spoken. Boston Rob and Amber are going to do it. This is a, a business trip, as I like to say. You, Brad Culpepper. I'm tired of you and the fucking chicken. You can call me the puppet master. They're going to be my little puppets. It's not like you're making a deal with the devil here. You get to milk your own milk, I guess. Who the hell bought it for me? Chicken. We got enough rocks here, too. We could build a pretty decent shelter just using rocks. I'm supposed to climb with you. You understand that better? Direct from Hobart, it's time for the only Survivor podcast in Australia dedicated to Survivor. Bring you all the latest interviews, episodes, and opinions from the greatest reality show on the planet. It's Survivor Oz, and here's your host, Ben Waterworth. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Survivor Oz, Australia's number one TV and film podcast, as we bring to you a very special episode, something a little bit different that uh, we are bringing you in the off-season of Survivor. Uh, We are a couple of months away from Season 31, Survivor Cambodia, Second Chance, and to fill the void that uh, you are missing in your little Survivor-filled heart, uh, we thought we would come at you and discuss Survivor at 30 and kind of just a bit of a retrospective of the seasons, where we're at, looking forward to maybe the next 30 seasons and just some general thoughts. And I've uh, got with me three wonderful Auslets from three different countries to discuss uh, all these issues and more. And we're going to start off in the great land down under of, uh, of Queensland. Well, that's the state in Australia. Uh, Julian Gronenberg is here. Hello, Julian. Hello, Ben. Good to be here. Very exciting to recap such a pivotal... Se- uh, well, it's a p- pivotal period the next 30 seasons, so let's hope this is only the halfway point, but we'll talk about that. So, good to be here. I hope it's only the quarter point, to be honest, like um, <laughs> maybe like the one-tenth point. Um, but look, look it, as long as we've got plenty more to go, I guess that's what we're getting at. Um, joining us from the US of A, uh, it's somebody who's only been on once since 34 hours worth of uh, rankings. And, and that last episode, it was to accept an award because she is the Auslet of the Year, the one and only Kate McLaughlin. Hello, Kate. Hello. How, how, good to be here. How, well, I was going to say, how are you? It's good to be here. We, we miss your voice. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's your voice it's, too. It's it's very exciting. Yeah. We should say it's about what six a.m. where where you are right now and recording this episode. I know. And I don't have any coffee. It's very upsetting. So I'll do my best to be happy without it. Well, I just want to say you volunteered for this, Kate. So uh. I know I did. I did. <laughs> well, it's good to have you back, and it's good to have a female voice too. It's uh been a, a between a few episodes since I've, I've few and far between they are yeah I, I, we've finally got any female Auslets now are we really that bad Kate yes okay good <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you can confirm that uh, speaking of bad this man does not fit into that sentence because he's from Canada and everything that comes from Canada is good except for Alanis Morissette it is Colin Hilding hello Colin hello. That's right, and everything that comes from Canada ends up in third place, like your third place Oslo of the Year. <laughs> well, you can be like the, the new um, Jared. Like We always introduce you last when Jared's not here, so you can be like second ready backup. I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but it's good to have you here, Colin. Hello. <laughs> It's great to be here uh, at five something in the morning. Yeah, well, it's, it's earlier for you. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you, you've been joining us for Double uh, Seven, now available via iTunes, uh, one of our spin offs, which I don't actually think we've really advertised much on Survivor Oz. But uh, are, you, are you happy to talk about Survivor, or would you rather us just talk about James Bond? Oh, well, either or. It's been a while for Survivor, so let's spread the love. Sure. Um, All right, so I will say in terms of this episode now, we're kind of renowned, I think, within the last 12 to 18 months of having episodes like this go for about three or four hours. Um, And uh, we also just recently had our Dan interview go for four hours. So I guess people are probably coming into this thinking, wow, they're going to talk about 30 seasons of Survivor. They're going to be here for about 28 hours. But um, we're going to have a special cap on this episode. We're limiting this to two hours. Hours. That's right. We're going to talk about 30 seasons of Survivor in two hours and also just some initial impressions and the future of the show. So if you're laughing, thinking it's not possible, well, you probably know if we succeeded or not because you'd see how much time is to go by the time you're listening to this. But as of recording this, I'm I'm hopeful that we can achieve uh, 
two hours. But I just want to get a quick impression, really quick impression, uh, from each of you here. Survivor at 30. I'm going to start with Julian. Now, um, I just want you to give me a, a little bit of a statement about Survivor, where we're at now and where it began. Do you feel that Survivor as a TV show is still as significant in TV history today as it was when it first started? Well, I'll start off by saying that 30 years, uh, 30 seasons, uh, let's hope for a 30 years, but 30 seasons is an incredible accomplishment. And I think there was a period maybe around after Heroes vs. Villain where it was seemed like, I mean, they've been saying, oh, that's it. You know, that's the death, death sort of season now. It's dropping off, but it really hasn't. And con- to consider that it beats American Idol, um, you know, in viewers and, and keeps going strong after so long. And even I feel the last, you know, three, four seasons have renewed a little bit of interest. So it's a, a massive success story. And, yeah, go Survivor. Let's hope that it's it's a history-making thing, isn't, isn't it, to have a reality show go for 15 years? Um, yeah, awesome. Well, I think it's it's up there. I, I probably would be corrected in that the real world, I don't know if that ever had a break in between when it first started, but... Um, maybe we will discover on this uh, episode if Survivor is the longest-running reality TV show. Um, maybe. Who knows? Kate, what about you? Uh, what are your thoughts on where we're at right now with Survivor? Um, yeah. It might be the longest competition reality or something, maybe. Possibly. Um, but I think it's it's good. I think, I think its impact in history is definitely stands because, I mean, it was like the mother of reality and all that. Um, I think its relevancy is kind of, you know, it's it went down a while ago and it stayed down as far as most people, when you mention it, they go, that's still on. <laughs> but the fact is it is still on, so it's impressive, and it has a following that's stuck with it. There you go, Colin. Yeah, I agree. You're going to get those people who say, oh, is that still on the air? But any other reality show to start around the same time, you know, Amazing Race, Big Brother, you get the same reaction. Just the fact that the show still rates as highly as it does, it doesn't have to get 51 million viewers every single week to still be a relevant show. I think the most impressive thing about Survivor is most fans will say, oh, the show's changed so much. They have all these new twists and everything, but you compare it to the other shows out there and the changes really have been minimal. You know, Take a show like Big Brother, look at all the things they have to do just to keep it relevant from one year to the next. And with the exception of little things like Idols, I mean, this is still the same basic show that we had back in 2000. So I think it's impressive that they've been able to uh, keep the show going. There's been such longevity with, in in contrast to other shows like this, minimal changes made. Well, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. And it, it's it's fascinating to think that I, I, I feel we all started and uh, with Survivor varying different reasons. We all came across it, um, you know, certain ways. And I don't know if any of us probably believe that we would be still watching it um, in 2015 and um, particularly sitting here on a computer in front of microphones talking about it for both our listeners to enjoy. So, um, <laughs> I mean, just quickly refresh. I mean, we've all discussed this in your Oslet introduction interviews, but just really quickly for our listeners who might not have gone through and listened to those, um, Colin, when did you start watching? How did you discover survivor i discovered it before episode one aired back in 2000 i saw a story on it on tv i thought the idea of people living on an island and uh voting each other out for money was sounded like something i wanted to do um but couldn't so i was waiting pretty much all week for the episode to air and you know, reserve my evening to watch it and that's pretty much how i spend every uh wednesday evening now still so from episode one, I was waiting for the show, and I've been watching it from the very beginning. Okay. Um, I was 12 years old. I saw the preview, and I was like, Mom, we got to watch this. we got to. And, um, yeah, pretty much been hooked since. Beautiful. Julian? Yeah, I, I didn't watch the first season when it was airing. Like, I was aware of it, and I heard people talking about it. But it was when the press of the second season started to really hype it up because it was filmed here. I was like... Oh, you have to watch that. And, yeah, I mean, I did go off it um, from about season seven until 2011 when I rewatched all the seasons. But since 2011, I've just been 
it hasn't really like there's been no other show that I've been even slightly wanting to watch or even think about like Survivor. Fascinating that we're all essentially day one viewers. Obviously, Julian, you dropped away a little bit there, but um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. And and actually, all of us here are around about similar ages. Colin, I know you're a little bit older, and uh, I mean, I think Kate, Julian, and I we're around about that same age. So we don't have any of those uh, you know eighteen year old snug people joining us today, and uh, <laughs> you know other people like that. So I guess this is going to make for fascinating discussion. And I guess really too, in terms of in discussing these, we we know we're going to miss over a lot. Um, and we're here to just briefly talk about the seasons and the legacies and the impacts and sort of standout moments and everything like that. If you obviously want more of an in-depth um, discussion on the seasons, we have our uh, Oz Caps, where we have uh, gone over every single season in the history of Survivor. Um, they range in lengths. Uh, we, again, started those off by capping them in about an hour, and the last one, I think, went for about three and a half hours. So, yeah, uh, listen to those. And, of course, we will pay mention to the fact that interviews and everything like you know survivor oz uh we've got everything covered so we're going to gel over a lot but um that's not the point of this episode is not to cover everything it's to go over the legacy of 30 years i found here two lists in regards to reality shows and lengths uh one here longest running reality tv shows in the u.s according to this survivor is third um behind the real world and road rules. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anybody knows that one, Kate? You're a road rules fan? <laughs> I was. Oh, it, it, legitimately, it's a, an actual, sh- <laughs> like, you've heard of it? Oh, yeah. It was um, it was real world, but competition. They were, like, on a bus, and they, like, traveled and did challenges sometimes and stuff. It was mostly just it was on a bus. Cool. <laughs> Sounds <Thank> fascinating. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love on this website here, it's got like stars of each season. And for Survivor, the three survivors they've listed as the stars of Survivor are Bobby John Drinkard, Vesepia Towery, and Jamie Dugan. Um, <laughs> clearly, the big. St- Where's Daniel Lewis? I know, right? Come on. Um, and according to Wikipedia, they've got a, a category here list of longest running TV shows by category. And according to this reality, it is Cops from 1989 onwards. But I guess that's not... The reality is such a broad genre in some senses of the word as well. Yeah, like... so, you know, Cops, bad boys, <laughs> bad boys, what you got to do? Um, all right, let's, let's, let's kick this off. We've, uh, we've already talked here for about 12 minutes and we haven't even discussed the season yet. Um, <laughs> let's go right back to season one. Borneo, uh, of course, aired in the year 2000, uh, filmed in Malaysia uh, on, on Borneo Island. Richard Hatch, the winner. Kelly Wigglesworth, the runner-up. We had a 4-3 vote. Uh, let's start off with Julian. Uh, memories of Borneo, legacy, everything else in between. Give us, a, give us a rundown. Well, Borneo is just so unique, really, compared to uh, even season two. Like, there's just so... The way it's filmed, the documentary-style filming, the... Just the quirks, like the gong that we don't have anymore, Jeff. <laughs> um, it's it's amazing to watch. I don't like. I can't rewatch it to be honest that much, um, just because it is so different. Um, but I still think it's an amazing season, and um, yeah, so iconic to use that word already. But it is. Sue Hawk, say no more. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Kate Borneo. Yeah, it's crazy to watch on a real uh, uh, on a rewatch. Like it's just so different than you, even than what you remember. Um, it's very documentary ish, but it's it's great. Um, all I have to say is thank God that Richard won. I mean, I would hate to see what Kelly would look like if she had a million dollars to spend on plastic surgery. No, <laughs> so, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> looks like a completely different human. Let's be serious here. Not bad, but just completely different. <laughs> I love how you have to say human. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> oh. But yeah, uh, Richard winning really like changed the course of what it could have been in just so many ways. Colin? I'll agree about Richard. If Kelly won this game, the future of the show would have been based around how Kelly played the game. And I don't think this show is on the air 15 years later based on that. Uh, the most interesting thing about this is that 
I watched this show constantly, rewatched it over and over again during those early seasons. You know, I, as I think most of us would, when you have only three or four seasons airing, you're rewatching the original ones a lot. And it sort of dropped off after a few years where I would look back on it and think, well, it's such a different show as we've all been saying. But I think about a year or two ago, I went back and I rewatched the entire season and I sort of put myself in the mindset of not uh comparing it to australian outback or anything else after that and it's still such an addictive show i mean you can go back and rewatch borneo and just separate yourself from the rest of survivor and you're glued to it and you're popping in one episode after another i mean the show really does hold up despite being so different it is so amazing watching this season um on a rewatch i think as we've all mentioned and um it's just fascinating to hear survivor fans who have maybe um, you know, discovered the show later or, you know, even just, say, discovered it on a new season and thought, this is great, hey, I'm going to go back and watch it and just hearing their reactions to um, what Survivor was. But, I mean, we, we were all there from the beginning. I mean, Julian, you were there from season two, but we all knew the hype and what it was like at the beginning and just how much of a big show this was. And um, it's it's kind of incredible to think that, you know, will we ever have a TV show like that again that has such an impact? Because, you know, without Borneo and how it all went, I mean, I know Survivor wasn't the very first reality show, but of course it um, really was the one that catapulted it up into our living rooms and we have to put up with it every night, which isn't always a good thing. But <laughs> if, if I could just really quickly add, Julian mentioned earlier about American Idol's legacy and for years, people dumped on Survivor because American Idol really did come around and steal the thunder. Not only that, but I think uh, to this day, American Idol holds the record for most consecutive years as the number one show. Yeah, We're talking about really the groundbreaking or history-making show in television history with American Idol, and that's about to go into its final season. Mm -hmm. So again, like the staying power of Survivor, it's not tied to whether you're the number one show year after year. It's about whether you can stay consistent after 15 years. And I think the show's really done that. Yeah. It's a very good point. And, um, yeah, it's fascinating to think that American Idol is about to finish. Whereas, um, yeah, Survivor, well, as of right now, we, we know we're going to get at least another two seasons through to 32. And um, we hope that it keeps continuing. Um, and we'll no doubt touch on that. Um, just quickly, got to mention, of course, that uh, the finale of... Borneo uh, that aired on the 23rd of August 2000, the second most watched broadcast, uh, non-sporting broadcast in America uh, of the decade, only behind the finale of Friends. Um, so that was the impact that it had and uh, something that will never be matched um, ever uh, in terms of Survivor, well, unless something drastic happens <laughs> but um, <laughs> can't see 51 million people watching an episode of survivor again sadly but uh and um we i mean we're not going to go through here things like rankings and all that sort of stuff if you, if you want to know where borneo ranks on any of our lists or all that sort of stuff head to the website because um you know that will be here all the time and we should also quickly mention of course returning players from this season great players uh you know richard hatcher jenna lewis rudy bosch sue hawk um jervis uh have all returned and of course we're just about to see amazingly kelly wigglesworth yay return after all these years i want you to each give me i only want one this is going to make it very difficult for each season the the most iconic the most standout player from Borneo. Let's start with you, Colin. Oh, well, this one's easy. It has to be Richard for Borneo. Has to be Hatch. Kate? Yeah, no question. Hatch? No question. Julian, agree with that? I, I do, but I'd like to also put Sue Hawke in the ring as well for her speech. And, and yeah, she was a big ally with Hatch. So, yeah, second fiddle. And, of course, Colleen, if you're listening... Um, we still want you, all right? We need to achieve that goal, okay? Just... Oh, sorry. We went to say Colleen, right? Yeah, uh, Colleen. Absolutely. I've edited all that in, so we just hear Colleen, Colleen, Colleen. Uh, simple. Uh, moving into the Australian Outback Season 2, filmed in uh, the Australian Outback. Well, sort of. Um, <laughs> we, we, you wouldn't call it Outback still, Julian. We, we, we spring this up all the time. Mm, yeah, no, it's taking a bit of artistic licence there for sure. It's, yes. um, if there's a river and there's like waterfalls, <laughs> there's, it's not Outback. There's not water in the Outback traditionally. Well, yes. Uh, Ed, uh, between January and May 2001, 16 contestants battled it out. The longest season in terms of 
days, 42 days. And uh, this was the number one rating show of the year 2001. It was a Super Bowl lead-out program as well, which uh, I'm not sure if it might have been the first ever reality show to be a lead-out program. I'm assuming it would be, given that uh, it was still very fresh. Start with you, Colin. Australian Outback, Legacy, Impact, everything else in between. This is kind of the benchmark. I mean, Borneo was so important, but Australian Outback is the one that everybody looks back on. I mean, this is the Empire Strikes Back of the Survivor uh, franchise. The interesting thing is that the game is really quite dull if you're just boiling it down to game. And I think that's one of the mistakes people make in modern Survivors is they're always thinking like, oh, the game wasn't interesting or there weren't a lot of big moves. There were some interesting moves in Australia and Outback, and the game did progress. You know, you didn't have people saying, oh, it should just be rewarding the nice people. But overall, the game is very standard. What makes Australia and Outback is that just the survival aspect is so different from what we get in any other season. I mean, Mike falling in a fire, have we ever gotten anything like that before? You know, the, the flood washing away their camp, uh, the hunting animals. There is so much going on. And Australian Outback really proves that if you have the right cast, then the show will work regardless of the game or the elements. Because how many of these people have returned and how many of these people who haven't returned could you instantly plug into any season and people are going to be interested in tuning in to watch? So, such good points. And um, with Jeff and uh, Alicia about to return, half this cast uh, has returned amazingly. You mean Kimmy? Kid, did I, what did I say? I say Alicia, did I? Alicia. Yeah, Kimmy. Yeah, that, that one too. Uh, Bring her back. Bring Alicia back. Yes. Alicia and Kimmy uh, have returned, clearly. Uh, Kate, just straight out back. Yeah, I mean, this is why I like, put it on the map, that it had staying power and it could do it again. Um, and the cast was just phenomenal. It's the reason it has the most returning players out of any cast ever. So, I mean, it's impressive. And you could bring them all back again and it would still work. So, um, I say Mad Dog next. Let's do it. No Nick, no Nick Brown? Um, I mean, I'm really holding out for him, but, you know, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> Hashtag Mad Dog was robbed for interview of the year. Um, Julian. Yeah, this just cemented the franchise, really, didn't it? Like, it was... Borneo was iconic, but this is more iconic. I'll try not to say that for every season. Um <laughs> But yeah, it was all. It's just awesome. Like the the fact that I think this is probably the best cast of all time on this season, like the others mentioned, and just um, yeah, I mean the the production was just tighter, and it just the format just seemed really fresh still because it was only in its second season, but it just seemed to work, and it was a lot smoother. I felt somehow um, the production, and it even gets better later on, but probably one of my top five favourite seasons of all time. Fascinating thing about the ratings for this season is that not one single episode rated less than 25 million people. Um, 45 million people tuned in for the premiere, 41 million people tuned in for the finale. Uh, I mean, just unheard of numbers today. And, I mean, even in, on this side of the world, just the impact it had and how huge it was. And, uh, I mean, this is a season that I've always said, yeah, exactly, has, has been touched on here too, cemented it. Um, so obsessed with this season. I was just addicted. And to this day, the season I've rewatched probably the most up there with All Stars. Me too, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I can never personally get sick of this season, ever. And um, it just is just, yeah, close to the perfect season, I would say. But I think, Colin, you summed it up perfectly there as well. Like, yeah, if you analyse the gameplay and everything, not brilliant. But um, if you have a perfect cast, then really there's not much you can do wrong. Um, one, one person, most iconic player from this season. Let's go with you, Julian, first. Uh, Jerry Manthe for me. Good answer. I like it. Kate. <laughs> Colby. It was like the most popular baby name after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, Sherry. Uh, 24 seasons later. Um, <laughs> Colin. Uh, it's really a toss-up between those two, but I think because of uh, how well she adapted her game in future seasons, it has to be Jerry. Now, um, we will also... Um, I was going to say we could point out the number of interviews that we've done from each season, but we're not going to toot our own horns that much. We do it enough. If you want to know, just go to our <laughs> website. Um, 
<laughs> Moving on, let's go to Africa. Um, the season, not actually, we're not going to get a plane and fly there. But uh, this, uh, <coughs> Ed, <laughs> well, we can if you want to. Um, October 2001 through to January 20, 2002. So um, the first and only season, if I am correct, that actually spanned two years. Um, and we should also point out, obviously, the first season to air post 9-11. Uh, bit bit of survivor fatigue, you might say, in terms of the ratings and everything along those lines. Um, it wrapped up filming just before uh, 9-11 happened, but um, obviously that affected this season slightly. But uh, a gruelling season, a tough season, filmed in, uh, in Kenya, in Africa. But um, a season that I personally feel is not as bad as some people point out. Kate, uh, Africa, the legacy, everything else in between? Yeah, I mean, it came at a time that people weren't really interested in reality TV, but it still, like, held its own, and that's that's good. Um, I think it's it's an underrated season. It's just so different as far as, like, where it's filmed and everything, and I don't know. It's got some really great characters that are not spoken about enough. I agree. Julian? Yeah, this season fascinates me for the location and just where they are and the fact that they go on these amazing rewards and it's just the opening when they're in the village and it's just so different and it's so ambitious for Survivor to attempt to film something like a show like this for 39 days in the, that kind of conditions and with those animals there. And I mean, there's a lot of criticism because the players were very tired, but, you know, that they're sort of in the one area the whole time and it, maybe that affected strategy, some people would say, but... I think it's it's an incredible season, and I think yeah, like it does get a bit of flack, but I I, I just don't see how it can like the first tribe switch in this season. So much happens, um, and yeah, you do start to see the real alliances happening now by season three, and a lot more sort of interesting things that we hadn't seen up up until that point. So Africa is pretty awesome. And, of course, it has the very iconic moment of, down, down, everybody, down. Have a nice day. Um, <laughs> Colin. This is my all-time favorite season. It always has been. And I never understood the backlash against the season. But I guess it depends on the point of view you're looking at it from. I mean, it is, uh, you would consider, a darker season because it's not as pleasant to watch in a lot of areas. But this was the first time where pretty much everybody came to play the game. And that's what makes this so interesting. Partly not just because they're all coming to play the game, but because this early in the franchise where you didn't have anything to compare it to, not everybody was playing the game well. I mean, you have the very early storylines pre-merge of the Samburu tribe, where it's this ridiculous age divide where you're watching eight people shoot themselves in the foot <laughs> for everything post-merge. And then you get this brilliant gameplay by people like Lex and Ethan and Tom and, you know, you could even argue Kim, Kelly. This is just such a fascinating game. And I'm glad that over the years, the reputation for this has improved as people go back and watch it. But if anybody still thinks that this is a boring season, go back and watch it. I mean, it's crazy, the, the survival, the, all the wildlife they had to deal with and the harsh conditions. And yeah, as Julian said, the rewards are incredible in this season. I love everything about Africa. I agree, and I have to say, two of my favourite uh, underrated players of all time uh, are on this season in uh, Lindsay and Kelly Goldsmith. Just fucking love those two. Um, and I, I'm sort of backtracking a little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll mention it for Africa. I didn't mention with Australia, of course, uh, Tina Wesson winning that season, 4-3 from Colby. Um, and uh, the returning players, well, there are eight of them. I'm not going to go through all of them for Africa. Um, this is the first time that we didn't have a 4-3 vote. Ethan Zahn, of course, defeated Kim Johnson, Five to two, and um, still amazes me that we've only ever had three returning players from this season: Ethan, Lex, and Tom. And we were robbed of not having T Bird. Colin, have you calmed down yet from T Bird not being on Cambodia? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether I'm delusional, but I'm convincing myself that she'll be on the very next uh, returning player season because how, how could you not put her on? I mean, she's so good. Yep, I agree. I completely agree. Um, all right, uh, most uh, iconic, memorable player, whatever you want to say. I'm, I'm using iconic now, Julian, all the bloody time. Um, <laughs> so it's, 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 good, good song by Madonna, by the way. Uh, Colin. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I haven't mentioned Die Another Day yet. Uh, <laughs> Colin, the, the player for this season, number one player, or you know what I'm trying to say. 
has to be Lex. Lex, Kate. This one's harder. Um, That's what she said. Oh dear. <laughs> you haven't missed us. <laughs> um, I'm guess I'll say Ethan. Ethan, okay, Julian. Oh, Diane Ogden for sure. <laughs> Lex, yeah. Lex for sure. Oh no, poor Diane. <laughs> <laughs> she could have been if it wasn't for bloody Clarence and the Beans. Um, anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, let's go to a season that we've never seen before in Australia. Just thought I'd mention it for the 817th time. Uh, Marquesas, uh, back to the beach we went, uh, filmed uh, on the Marquesan Islands. Um, aired 2002 in February through to May 2002. So we only really had a month's break, believe it or not between when Africa ended and when uh, Marquesas started, really began, though, the, the sequence of having the two seasons each year. So we have, obviously, one starting in February, one starting in September. Uh, 16 castaways on this season. Um, of course, very memorable for uh, a certain player who has gone on to be one of the greatest of all time. One person on this podcast will argue that he is the greatest of all time. And, uh, of course, very well known for the Purple Rock twist, amongst many things. Kate, because this is where your lover boy started, I'm going to start with you for Marquesas. This is the birth of the Godfather. Boston Rob. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> like, it was just amazing. Oh, gosh. I mean, there's so many great things about this season, but I really do think... I mean, some of the things, like, taking out a really strong player in the beginning, like, and, you know, actually switching your alliances and things like that, it was just, it was very interesting, all the changes, and people were finally willing to, like, step outside the box a little bit, and it was nice. Colin? Yeah, you do have to give the season credit for how the game changed, and we had a lot of firsts. At the time it aired, I was not really crazy about it. And I think for years afterwards, it was my least favorite season, despite the fact that, I mean, I know I'm the one who put him up in the rankings, but I mean, I was obsessed with Boston Rob. He was like the greatest character you'd ever seen on reality TV, even being, you know, pre-jury player. Uh, But I think this season holds up better over time than I ever would have expected it to. And part of that is the fact that you get to see so many firsts with this. I think it's also that, you know, Vesepia's game is extremely underrated, and I could go on all day about how good Vesepia's game is, and I understand that it's sort of a hidden game, and that's one of the reasons. I think people sometimes need to separate the winner of the season, whether they're entertaining, from the rest of the season, because there's a lot of good stuff here. Julian? Yeah, it's, um, it's, I mean, I only saw it years later, and I, I do think it's got some pretty interesting things, and, um, I mean, the fact that there is the first sort of uh, flipping and, and people changing alliances is pretty epic, and the rocks. And I mean, Kathy is a great mm-hmm. one of my favourite people from all time. So she's a legacy for this season. Um, so yeah, it is. It is a good season. It's just, it's just not as good as the first th- three, I don't think, but. Nonetheless, um, still pretty good. It's one personally that I enjoy more and more every time I rewatch it. I remember the first time I actually did watch it, I didn't think it was that great. But um, yeah, the more I've watched it, I've enjoyed it. Um, you know, from a personal standpoint, getting to know someone like John Carroll as much as we have throughout this show um, has been amazing. And, I, you know, personal feelings aside, I still think John, the fact that he's never played again is a, is a travesty. And also the fact, too, that we've only ever had two people return from this season. Um, well, one of them's returned four times. But, yes, Kathy, um, clearly a, a big name alongside uh, Mr. Boston Rob. And, uh, yeah, the Purple Rock, it struck fear into so many players for a very long time. And we didn't see it for 23 more seasons when it was white, not purple. Um, it faded over those 23 years. Um, <laughs> I guess I ask the one player from this season, and I kind of think I know the... Well, I know the answer from Kate. Kate, do I even need to ask you? No, no, not no. at all. Boston Rob. Am, I, am I assuming both Colin and Julian are going to say the same? Yeah, if that's... Oh. Absolutely. Yep. Kathy, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make Kate hang up again, Julian, please. Like, please. <laughs> we got her back. But, <laughs> um, of course, Vesepia won this season uh, 4-3 over Nalia as well. Uh, all right, moving on to, to me, uh, the most underrated season of all time, or, well, 
Actually, no, I would reserve that for another season because I feel Thailand slowly is getting a bit of love, even though for a very long time it was universally panned as the worst season of all time. Uh, filmed in Thailand, 16 uh, contestants, of course, uh, started off the very first time that we didn't have predetermined tribes. They were chosen straight off the bandwagon by uh, Jan and Jake, and it produced the greatest single human being in the history of the world who won this season and is just a God amongst men. Julian, Thailand. I am really quite into Thailand. Like, I watched it when it originally aired in 2002, and I was invested in it. I think that's because I had a, had a break from Africa, so I hadn't really watched Australian Survivor, which filmed, and I was right back into it again. And even though there is a pagonging and all that sort of stuff, there's still some pretty good moments in this season. I've really enjoyed it on a rewatch, including... Rob Zavaknik, Ted and Gandhi are just the Thai culture that they, you know, do a really good job of integrating. There's some kind of shitty challenges, but whatever. Um, Not Tangram. It's a pr- yeah, Tangram. No. And shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Mark Hasis also had the kite flying, so, you know. That's true. Um, yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, it's sure, like, it's it's got it. Criticisms are valid to a point, but, but there's some, some pretty amazing characters here, too. And uh, just a little bit of negativity and darkness, I suppose, which is seems to be what gets people not liking seasons with Worlds Apart 2. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's good. All right. Kate? Yeah, I like the, the relating it to Worlds Apart. Like, the, the Ted and Gandhi, I think, just left a nasty taste in your mouth. Um, I also think it was weird that Brian was, like, the first winner that I feel like wasn't really overly embraced by CBS and, like, just, like... They were kind of like, all right, now let's move on. But, um, yeah, it was it was an okay season. I, it's just never done it for me. But I know it does it for you, Ben. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> I'm glad you know me well. Colin? It's really interesting to look back on the reputation of some seasons because I always felt like if Thailand were to air maybe post-China or Micronesia, that it, it would have been viewed more positively. These early seasons Survivor, people's opinions very much came down to whether or not the cast was likable and whether or not it was kind of a funny season to watch. And this being a very serious season, and yeah, there was some heavy stuff in there, I think that's what really jaded people's opinions, and they they weren't really looking at the game at the time. I kind of always went into Survivor interested in how the game progressed. So for me, for years, this was always one of my very favorite seasons. Um, and I think that it still holds up pretty well years later. What people really need to go into Thailand looking for is just the overall story arcs that happen. And I think you look at the tribes for that. I mean, it's really quite fascinating to watch Sukjai as the first tribe that completely self-destructs hmm. just based on their own stupidity. And Chewy Gone, I mean, that's that's a great underdog story if you could get behind any of the people personally. Uh yeah, there's there's some interesting stories that happen here. I mean, Shien blowing up her own game. I mean, we, we hadn't seen anything like that before. So I think that this is a pretty solid season. Not quite, maybe top 10, not quite top 10 for me, somewhere around there. But uh, I always appreciated this just for the game. And I think that's what people uh, need to go into it looking for. Didn't mention aired between September and December 2002. Brian Hardick defeated Clay Jordan 4-3. to three. And only one returning player from this season we've seen since Sheehan, of course, returned for All-Stars. An absolute travesty. CBS, fix it! Um, and if you haven't watched Thailand in a while and still consider it to be a shit season, go back and re-watch it. It warrants some love. Okay. Amazon. Um, aired. 2003, February to May, um, 16 castaways again, filmed in the Rio Negro area of the Amazon in Brazil, and um, of course, very well known for the tribal, oh, we didn't mention the iconic player, thanks Colin, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just assuming you're all going to say Brian, you this, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh great, uh, yep, yeah, iconic player for Thailand, thanks Colin, <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna risk getting fired here. Um, I think that Brian's game stands on its own in this season, but just based purely on being a character, I'm gonna go with Shean. I love Shean. I love the players that 
completely self-destruct. Okay. I think Stephanie Dell was really a standout. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't expect any other player there, Kate. Okay? Come on. <laughs> no, her dancing at the end really did it for me. <laughs> Uh, do you want to give a serious answer, or is that a serious answer? No, actually, I'm kind of with Colin. She and like she at least tried to change some things. I feel so mean saying you're going to give a serious answer because if you said, <laughs> said like that is my serious <laughs> answer, <laughs> maybe that was serious. All right, maybe I'm really into her. Yeah, well, so you should be. All right, uh, Julian. Yeah, it's got to be Brian. He is pretty dominant and cold as ice. I'm glad that one person on this podcast has been taught well. Uh, anyway, as I was saying about the Amazon, uh, well-renowned for its uh, battle of the sexes, tribes divided into men versus women before we had a switch, and, of course, um, everything else that happened there. Jenna Maraska won the season, defeating Matthew von Ertfelder 6-1 to one in the first near blowout in the history of Survivor. Colin, Amazon. In my opinion, flip-flops on this one over the years. Uh, when it first aired, I was really annoyed by the season because it kind of was like watching a very superficial high school class sort of unfold on an island. And uh, that turned me off for a long time. And I've come around on this season the last couple of years. Uh, I think there's so many things to appreciate about it. I mean, Sesternino's game, it, it was something we hadn't seen before. Or we had seen elements of it, and he just sort of brought everything together from the first five seasons. But you can't even uh, really talk about the season without talking about how well the male versus female season played out, uh, the, the twist played out. I don't think that many people look on the male-female thing as positively as they should have, because One World and you know other seasons didn't do it as well. I mean, this entire season was based around that, and they cast the perfect cast to do that the fact that this turned into kind of high school drama later on was a result of them doing so well in casting this male and female divide but even on top of that you get like such a fascinating character like matt like how is matt not a legend in survivor Mm -hmm. i understand a lot of what we saw was kind of the editors creating you know whatever they could out of a hero because they're they didn't really have the most likable uh gameplay as far as the strategy goes but that's such an interesting character to see in somebody who learns the game that late and made a couple of really interesting moves on their own. I mean, I think that if you're watching this for Matt, this is uh, a season that you're not really going to get to see anything like it in any of the future ones. Uh, But yeah, the male and female twist is done so well in here and there's so many funny moments and they really cast the right cast for this season. Okay. Um, yeah, I think the big thing that was lacking from Thailand was fun, and this season was just, like, an abundance of fun. Like, I just feel like the cast was having fun. I feel like production was having fun. Like, the editing, like, when they have the little bubbles of the girls while the guys are talking (laughs) about them and stuff. Like, they clearly were having a lot of fun with this season. Um, I think the men versus women twist worked perfectly, and you could tell it worked just like they wanted it to. Um, yeah, and Rob Sestronino, I mean, and I think Matt as well, like, I love, why does he need his machete so sharp? Like, that's just, <laughs> like, he's so creepy, like, that just, that, nothing that awesome has happened he's que- since then. He's creepy, he's, he's creepy. 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 Uh, Julian. Yeah, it's such a fun season, especially, like, in contrast to Thailand, like, it's a much more young, teeny bopper kind of cast, and there's all this flirting, and all that fun stuff. It's pretty cool that they're in the Amazon rainforest as well, not to mention, like, I'm a big sucker for locations. So the fact that we get such rich sort of scenery and all these kind of really cultural references in these early seasons, I just lap that up. So, I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of Jenna as well. I think yeah. she had a really, really interesting win um, and a bit underrated. Like, she, she gets panned a lot, but... Yeah. Um, um, I think her game just shows you don't always have to be playing from day day one to have a play a good game. Um, and yeah, look, the fact that she won is is interesting. I agree in with itself, you. So yeah, I agree with you. I've always said Jenna's been underrated as a winner. Um, I, I personally like I've gone off Amazon a little bit. I know during our commentaries uh, we got a little bit bored during, and I feel bad saying that. <laughs> yeah, but, we did. Um, 
Yeah, it was it was interesting, but yeah, it can't go past uh, Rob Sestanino um, and what he I think really did for the, how the game is played um, th- from that standpoint. And again, still to this day, uh, the only player Jeff Probst has ever said the greatest player never to have won. So, uh, and of course, gone on to huge things since the show. Uh, most iconic player from this season, Julian. Um, it would have to be Rob. Yeah, Kate. Gene. Beto. <laughs> now give us a serious answer. <laughs> Sesternino, come on now. Ah, uh, Colin. It's obviously Sesternino, but because I didn't mention it before, I have to say, if you want the most unintentionally funny character in Survivor history, watch this season for Heidi. It's so <laughs> funny to watch her. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Um, all right. Let's move in now to one of universally the greatest seasons of all time generally always makes our top five of uh, best seasons of all time on our oscars and uh it's very rare that you'll ever find this out of a person's top 10 let alone top five really uh pearl islands um we of course had uh, 16 players again uh pirate theme uh so much to say about this season uh sandra diaz twine of course won her first of two she defeated lil sad face morris six to one uh, let's start with uh, Julian Pearl Islands. Uh, hit me with your best shot. Who the hell voted for Pearl Islands? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's awesome. It's so it's iconic. It is um, the pirate theme was just so well ex- executed uh, the whole way through. Rupert, um, so much to say. The cast is probably one of the best of all time as well. Um, and, and, I mean, there's controversial elements. It has it all, really. It's got the, the first epic villain that we ever saw in the show's history with um, Fair Play. Oh, what to even say. It's just epicness, epicness. Okay. First quit. Oh, yep, yep, first quit. Yes, we should mention first quit. Hello, Austin. And Pelican Pete. Hmm. Yeah, there's so many, like, just moments that haven't happened in any other thing like i mean like i love the way it starts um how they start in the village that's just so different and unique um i love how they go and like they get to take things from each other which they've done a few other times but it was done throughout the whole season and it was really interesting i mean the grandma lie that's like one of the first things people remember about survivor other than the two chicks getting naked for peanut butter and chocolate, which we didn't mention. Um, <laughs> that happened, like, did it? Oh, okay. That was like, it was just a very epic season. Colin? Yeah, I think I'm I'm going to surprise some people, at least with my initial opinion here, because I hated this season for years, and I kind of had to learn to not be uh, a hypocrite, as I've been saying with Africa and Thailand that uh, people need to separate, you know, some of the unpleasant stuff and just appreciate it for the game. I was so into the game of Survivor that when Pearl Islands aired, I just wasn't interested because the game really is an absolute mess here. But in the last couple of years, going back and rewatching it, I mean, I love this season now and I totally understand, you know, a top 10 close to top five season because you don't have to always have a good game. You can have a game that's just a complete disaster here but you can appreciate all the characters they have along the way and how everything unfolds the game itself i mean it's 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 bizarrely fascinating to watch you know uh the whole outcast thing and how lil can make it to the end and how somebody like fairplay can make it to the end you can also remove johnny fairplay from this season and you have a great season you can remove rupert from the season you know they're kind of like them, those two and Sandra get all the credit, but there's so many other good characters here that uh, unlike a season like Samoa or uh, some of the others from recent memory that are just blown away by one character. I mean, there's a lot of good characters here. Savage and Tawana and Austin, obviously. I mean, Burton, great character. Who the hell removed me from the season? Um, yeah, it's so much to, uh, to say about it and everything and, um, really brought a lot of people into it with, uh, with Rupert. So iconic was Rupert. And, um, of course he's re- the only other player besides Rob to have played four times. Sandra won twice, saw fair play again for Micronesia. So we've had the three returning players. Didn't mention for Amazon, of course, we've uh, had the two in Jenner and Rob, but, um, 
Yeah, such such an iconic season. Uh, aired due, uh, sorry, September to December 2003. Um, and, yeah, as I mentioned, Sandra defeated Lil. Uh, now, this could actually be quite tough. The one iconic player from this season, Colin. Uh, if we're basing it on this season, then I would go with Rupert. Okay, Kate. I'm going to go out there and say fair play. Okay, Julian. I was thinking th- fair play too, just because he lasted longer, but the, it's pretty even match between Rupert and him. Yeah, it's it's a tough one um, if you were to flip that coin, but uh, yeah, one of those, definitely. All right, into uh, All-Stars, the very first season to have returning players. The first season to have more than 16 players. The first season to have three tribes filmed in the Pearl Islands again. And uh, Amber Burkich slash Mariano defeated Rob Mariano 4-3 in... Uh, to me, it's the greatest season of all time, but a lot of people, it's their least favourite season and worst season of all time. It aired in 2004 between February and May, and again, was also a Super Bowl lead-out program. We've just finished doing commentaries of this season. Colin, you weren't there for any of them, but uh, All-Stars, give us your take on it. I loved All-Stars for years, uh, despite the fact that I hated Amber beating Rob uh, so badly that I re-edited the season for all of my rewatches. Uh, but you know what? Like, I can understand people's complaints about it, and I'm not gonna say it's one of the worst seasons because it isn't. I think it's very much in the middle. But it is very hard to watch now on a rewatch and seeing. Not, I'm not gonna blame Rob. A lot of people blame Rob and say, "Well, you know, he just sort of ripped apart the game." I kind of blame the fact that a lot of these return players came in with the wrong idea. And uh, it's not so pleasant to watch nowadays. But you can't really uh, dump all over the season because there are so many entertaining moments throughout it. There's heavy moments, too, that probably shouldn't be there. But there's a lot of drama. And especially when you do get to the merge where a lot of these seasons fall apart. I mean, we have the Lex drama, we have the Kathy drama, we have this ongoing storyline with Big Tom and Rob and, you know, who was trying to throw who under the bus. I mean, there's a lot of good in this season, but I just don't think it holds up as well as it did when I first saw this. Interesting. You kind of had that dynamic with Pearl Islands and all stars, um, over the years. So yeah, fascinating. Uh, Kate, I fucking love All Stars, and it totally does hold up. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> but... Kate's back. <laughs> it was epic then. It's epic now. Yeah, like Boston Rob played dirty, but I love it. Like these motherfuckers are out here, like, oh, it's our best friend time, and he's like, no, I'm taking your money and I'm sending your ass home, and it was awesome. Like, I just think, and there's just so much. Fun, like Shapira is just a riot. They're like a disaster. And like Rupert building a freaking shelter in the ground. And like <laughs> Jerry, it isn't worth it. Like it, the season just gets better and better every time I watch it. And for all the haters out there, just go suck on a big one because you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, ladies and gentlemen, why we hired Kate and she's the Ozzard of the Year. Um, Julian. Oh, yeah, I hated All Stars when I first saw it. Like, I saw it at the time. That was pretty much the last bit of the season. That's actually what I stopped watching Survivor originally at that time. And, and um, it's, it's weird. I don't know, like, why that much then. I think it was a combination of factors. But you do have, have to give it props. Like, there's a lot to like about it. And, like, to see Jerry again and to see all these people back. But I think at the time I was just like, why are they having returning players? Like, I wasn't really sold on the idea of returning players particularly. Um, and so I was just like, oh, this feels too, they've just gone on some weird diversion here, bringing back people. But yeah, there's heaps of amazing moments and it is, uh, I mean, it's, it's the, the pre-merge up until probably Ethan's boot a lot, or probably, probably Jerry or Lex's boot, then it really goes downhill for me. But, um, yeah, I mean, it is a dominant game that Rob played and he played it differently and props to him for that, but. Yeah, it's just a bit frustrating to watch them. No one else was up to it. So, I guess it's an interesting question to ask a uh, most iconic player from the season, but I guess base it on 
the game they played, really, moving forward and, you know, future impact on the game. Julian, uh, one player from this season? Uh, mm, I don't want to say Rob, but I think I have to. Kate? Yeah, you have to. You have to. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> so sultry the way you said that. Uh, Colin? Yeah, I think he's the only one who went into the season and came out with a better reputation than he started. So there's really no argument. <laughs> All right, well, we're at the 54-minute mark, and we're only up to All-Stars, so um, we're, we're doing well here. We're, <laughs> we're going to be getting to, like, um, <laughs> Samoa. Samoa was good. Here is those feelings was good. Yeah, let's be honest. Like These seasons are better to talk about yes. than season 22, mm. yes. 20, uh, tw- 21, sorry, to 24. Mood changes slightly. We're going to Vanuatu, and, yeah, it's, game's starting to develop into something a little bit more. Uh, we're about to do commentaries of this season, actually. Um, we're taking a week off in between commentaries to do this episode before we start with Vanuatu. To next week. Uh, I like this season. Um, it's a season that I think uh, over the years again has um, developed a lot more of a cult following. Um, Ed, between September and December 2004, Chris Doherty won the season. Uh, he defeated um, the underrated, I will say, Twyla Tanner. 5-2, to two, filmed in Vanuatu, hence the name of the season. And again, we had a tribe divide of uh, sex, male versus female. Kate, I'll start with you for Vanuatu. Um, see, for me, Vanuatu is one of the seasons that um, I didn't really particularly care for at first, but it's it's grown on me. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that, like, a lot of, as much older cast, like, um, I feel like a lot of the younger people were voted out early, and so, I don't, I don't know, to me, it made it less interesting in some ways, but I love Chris, I love his game, I think it's overrated, but to the point that I think people are starting to notice that it was really, really good. Um, I think there were some great characters, and it was an interesting location, but it's still not my favorite season by any means. Colin? I'm so glad that commentaries are coming up on Vanuatu, because I won't have to spend the next hour and ten minutes just with my comments on the season, because <laughs> I love Vanuatu. This and Africa are like the two seasons that my opinions have never changed on, and they've always been my favorite. Chris's story is so well told here. Uh, so many incredible characters. I mean, Amy and Eliza, Twyla, Sarge is an awesome character. And the male and female thing, it doesn't work the same way as it worked in Amazon, but it works on a different level. It works on like a competitive level. And all I got to say is like, Rory, uh, do you even need to say anything else? Rory is (laughs) maybe the greatest character to never return on Survivor. I'll stand by that. (laughs) I love me some Rory. Julian? Yeah, um, it's it's got a lot to love about it as well. Like, there is a pretty awesome cast at the time. I feel like I got really annoyed at, like, uh, the old ditties, like Scout (laughs) and Twyla and... (laughs) <laughs> and even Sarge and, um, I don't know, there was a few older, like Rory is bizarre um, and you do <laughs> scream, but then you rewatch it and it's, it is it is so memorable, some of these, you know, you have double, I think there's 18 castaways for the first time, so you have a double vote out. There are some new sort of things happening. There's um, a bloody earthquake on camera um, as Leanne's doing a confessional. That's pretty epic. Um, I enjoyed that quite a lot. Um, yeah it's it's a good season it's probably sort of around the middle mark for me but um it is probably before the last of the real yeah original feeling seasons but sort of blending into sort of more twists and and all that that you see later on okay returning players of course from this season amy and eliza both returned for micronesia again one of these ones that you, you feel there should be more returning players from this season, but um, we've never had any one since Amy and Eliza return. Um, the one long-lasting player, the legacy player, um, Julian. Uh, I'd like to say Eliza because she's so active on Twitter still and she's always getting her opinions out there and her facial expressions uh, will go down in history for the best eyes <laughs> of a Survivor contestant. Kate? Yeah, I agree. Eliza's eyes are just like, they're iconic in themselves. <laughs> Colin? I could make an argument for almost any player on this season, but I'm going to say for the opposite reason, the fact that Chris probably barely knows how to use Facebook <laughs> and that his reputation has improved so much over the years. Chris, all the way. Can you please make an argument for Dolly Neely? 
I love Dolly. Oh, <laughs> if you're going to give me the next hour, I will make an argument for Dolly. What a great character. You're, you're getting up at 5 a.m. next week to do Vanuatu commentaries, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move into season 10, Palau. Um, a season that generally is fairly loved. Um I personally think it's a little overrated. It's still a good season, but um, yeah, not as good as I think some people make it out to be. First time we had 20 competitors, but of course two of them left us pretty much straight away. Uh, rest in peace, Wanda and Jonathan. They're not dead, but um, they left the game, I should say. <laughs> um, well, I mean, they could be dead by the time... If they are dead by the time you're listening to this, we they were alive when we recorded it. I'm shutting up. Uh, and between February and May... 2005 uh, filmed uh, at Karor in Palau. Uh, very magnificent location. Uh, one of the best locations for sure. And of course at the end we had uh, Tom Westman with a dominant 6-1 uh, victory over Katie Gallagher. Uh, let's start with you, Colin Palau. Palau's right up there for me too. Um, not quite as high as Africa or Vanuatu, but uh, I'm surprised that this is one of those seasons, as your opinions do flip-flop over the years, this is one of those seasons where my opinion's pretty much always been solid. I consider this pretty close to a top-five season, and it's one of those seasons that didn't really need twists to make it different. This is, if we're talking about how Borneo feels like a different season, Palau just as much you rewatch Palau and you barely notice you're watching Survivor because just how the game unfolded with one tribe winning everything it, you can't compare it to any other season and uh, I for one a lot of people think that all the drama was just during Oolong's losing streak I think the best stuff came later on and uh, another one of those casts where I think that an argument could be made for any of these players to return uh, I love Palau okay I mean, like, the decimation of Oolong is just, like, history-making, you know what I mean? Like, they had to let it happen eventually. I feel it was sort of rigged at points, but <laughs> um, it was just so interesting, and Stephanie was just so likable, the way that, you know, in this season. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> she was, you know, America's fucking sweetheart, and everyone was just like, oh, Stephanie. And um, I feel like it was the first time that someone actually, like, who was a strong male just barreled through and like won, you know what I mean? Like it was really, really impressive. It was something that people were beginning to think. I don't think they thought it could be done necessarily. Hmm. So it's a good season. Julian. Yeah, I agree with that Tom's statement because it, it did sort of seem like, Oh, he's too visible. Like he'll, he'll get voted out. And the fact that he did take it all the way to the end and led such a strong tribe as a leader was really interesting to watch. And by contrast, the flip side of that was the sort of incompetence of Oolong. And, and yeah, I mean, it, the first fire-making challenge that we'd ever seen, um, the military theme was pretty cool, I thought. I mean, they didn't sort of carry it on all, all season like Pearl Islands with the pirates or anything like that. But, yes, Palau, Palau is definitely memorable and it's very, very unique for the fact that we did have that complete decimation. And, um, yeah, you, w the first time I was watching it, I was just laughing it up so much. Um, returning players, Bobby, John and Stephanie, obviously return next season, which we'll get to in just a moment to satisfy Julian's cravings. And, <laughs> um, of course, Stephanie and Tom returned for Heroes vs. Villains. Iconic player. Julian, uh, Palau, let's say Thailand again. Palau. Uh, Palau's iconic player would have to be, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's so easy to say the winner, but I'd like to say Kobe's pretty iconic, but, but Tom as well. All right. I'm glad Kobe got a shout-out. Hello, Kobe. You're probably listening to this. Uh, Kate? Uh, Stephanie. At the time, she was like as big as Rupert. It was a big deal. True. Colin? Yeah, I'm going to say Stephanie because I think that this is the first time that the show proved that they could by editing, create their own characters. Because I don't think Stephanie changed from any season, but yeah, we got a different Stephanie each time. Very good point. Uh, moving on, one person's about to jizz himself. Uh, Guatemala, uh, Ed, 2005, September, between, September, December, filmed in Guatemala, funnily enough. Uh, the winner, Danny Boatwright, uh, very underrated winner in my eyes, defeated Stephanie LaGrosse 6-1. The first time we ever had returning players mixed with new players. There were 18 in total, including Stephanie and Bobby John, who returned uh, to battle it out against them. A very grueling, tough, difficult season. Um, and a 
season that sadly is not really highly regarded and a season that, very sadly, we've never seen a returning player from. Julian, Guatemala, gush about it, my friend. Well, well, Ben, um, I can't wait till we get to the commentaries for these. I, I just, I don't know why I like it so much. It's not even that rational. Like, you know, you just get obsessed with something and I think, for me, I love it just because there's so many reasons. I won't, I won't go on all day, but it is one of those epic locations again and it's one of the last sort of really rugged, tough inland seasons that we ever see. Token teams just isn't the same level. And, um, yeah, look, it, it's got a lot of um, interesting characters. I think there's a, there's a few sort of episodes in the beginning which it's hard to remember the contestants, but after that, it's a travesty that none of them have returned. And if it's all sort of been said. Like, it, it's a... Oh, I like it so much, I can't even, can't even start, Ben. <laughs> you need to go um, have some... Julian time. <laughs> Kate. <laughs> uh, this season used to be in my top three, and each time I watch it, I it goes down a little bit. I still think it's a good season, but um, and the location is phenomenal, but Danny not talking enough just really infuriates me and just fucking pisses me off. <laughs> I'm like, why the fuck did you win? And I mean, I get it. She was good, and I get her strategy to not talk to production, but it's irritating. I like narration. Okay, go on. This one's kind of an odd one because I wouldn't rank this that highly. I'd rank it closer to my bottom seasons, but yet every time somebody complains about Guatemala, I have about an hour of uh, very valid arguments where I argue in uh, um, uh, support of it. Because there really is so much good in this season. I mean, you have a lot of good characters, but the game, if you really boil it down to just the game of Guatemala, this is an epic game. This is where blindsides really started. Micronesia gets way too much credit for what Guatemala really started. And I think I can't even really pinpoint why I wouldn't rank it higher. Maybe it's just not one of those seasons that I really have an urge to ever go back and watch. But yet when I do watch it, I appreciate everything that's in here. It's um, it's interesting that again this season we've never had a returning player. I just I just can't, can't fathom. There are just some things in the Survivor universe that I can't fathom, and this is one of them. Why we've not had the likes of a Judd or an Amy or a Danny or a or Even a Ray. Jamie. Ja- yeah, Jamie. Like so many of these people, but um, you know we've had Candace return uh, twice. Um. <laughs> Shut up, Ben. We're not even up to Cook Island yet. Uh, legacy player, Colin. Whew, uh, my wife's going to kill me for not saying Bobby John, but I'm <laughs> going to go with Judd. Uh, the guy is just television gold. Kate. Um, shit. <laughs> I don't... I don't... <laughs> Judd, yeah, sure. Great. Uh, Julian. <laughs> well, this one's kind of tough because no one's really up a bar Stephanie and she's sort of from Palau anyway, has come back. So it's sort of hard to think of anyone that, that spread around the editing. I think Gary was a pretty strong, you know, legacy character. And Lydia too, you still, even though she was pretty like weird in this season, like her pancake thing still lives on. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Quick mention, Birth of the Immunity Idol, and we didn't mention in Palau, of course, Birth of Exile Island. The reason I say that is because the next season combines those two and uh, brings us to, often regarded as a quintessential middle season, Panama slash Exile Island, uh, whatever you want to call it. I always refer to it as Panama, but I know a lot of people refer to it as Exile Island. Air between February and May 2006, 16 castaways. First time we ever had four tribes and the first time we had an island twist sort of at the beginning. Um, Colin, Panama. I have not a lot of good to say about this season. This was the first time where I came out of Survivor being very disappointed by it. And the arguments that people always make about Panama in support of it is its cast. And I'll agree, this is a really strong cast. Kind of on paper, a really strong cast. And everybody makes their mark, but I just don't see anything entertaining about this season. I don't see anything entertaining about the game. And it's just reuse location and... <laughs> Aris is kind of the first winner where you finish the season and there are just as many arguments that you could make for why he probably should have lost as how he won. Uh, not taking anything away from his game, and I think Terry's obviously fantastic, but the season's just always rubbed me the wrong way. Kate? 
I've decided me and Colin are just like complete opposites. <laughs> Because I fucking love this season. I think it has a lot of faults. I think Lamina is just, like, completely fucking dull. Mm. Um, other than Terry. Um, I've always had this weird affinity for Sally. I don't know. I like her. Um, I don't. She's, very, she's, like, normal. She's she's normal and level-headed and makes sense. Whereas you have fucking Kasaya, and they're just nuts. And I love it. Like, they are out of their mind crazy. And don't even get me started on the fact that Shane is not on the next season. Like... <laughs> I wanted to cry. I chucked my iPad across the room and I found out like he is just ridiculous. He was the first, I feel like character for the sake of being a character. You know what I mean? He was just so out there and it was great. And then you have the birth of Sari, who was someone who could have gone home right away, but she didn't. And she ended up being one of like the best players that's ever been in the game. And it's just ridiculous. Um, Ars is when I think is really overshadowed by, Terry's big edit, you know, because they made Terry such a hero that at the end when Terry goes and then you're like, oh, well, I kind of liked ours, but I wanted Terry to win. But I still think ours is a good player. And I think the season overall is just incredibly entertaining. So, Julian. I am sort of half half on this season. Like, it, it does have a lot of fun moments, but I just didn't feel that connected to a lot of the cast. Like, uh, Lamina. I mean, there were some amazing characters like Sari and Shane, but apart from that, I thought Iris was pretty dull. Same with Danielle Di Lorenzo at the time. Like, I appreciate her more now, but I don't know. I wasn't very impressed by the Immunity Idol as well. Um, just the way it was sort of done, it was still ironing out the kinks. I don't really like the Terry and the God Idol, God Idol um sort of his story, I, that real hero edit, under, I don't know, I just felt he was being so pushed down our throats and I got really aggravated with that, but it is, it's unique, like it's got its own, it, it's different, so I appreciate it for the fact that it is so different from the first 11 seasons and probably a lot of them after as well, so yeah, it's, it's a different, it's a shift away from a lot of stuff in many ways this season. A lot of people would argue that this is the real beginning of sort of the middle period of Survivor. Some people will argue it's a little bit beforehand. And if you want to take it on um, the number of seasons that you'd have, you would say Guatemala is the beginning because 11 to 20, but whatever you want to say there. Um, and yeah, Aris Buschkowskis won this season 5-2 to two over the, um, you know, memorable villain in uh, Daniel DiLorenzo. Um, five two there. Uh, iconic player, Kate. Um, fuck it. I'm gonna say Shane because Shane's awesome. Julian. Yep, Shane for sure. Colin. Shane over Sari. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. <isn't it? laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. Sari was a better na- narrator, but Shane was just batshit crazy. Like you just oh. Guessing, guessing you're saying Sari then, Colin? Uh, yeah, it has to, I'm surprised this wasn't like a given. <laughs> well, Sari, of course, uh, one of the returning players from this season. She's played twice uh, after this season. Uh, Aris returned, as has Danielle, and we're just about to see Terry Deets return and not Shane, which <laughs> is up there with uh, T-Bird as a what-the-fuck moment. Um Okay, let's move into Cook Islands. Uh, <laughs> Ed in between uh, Ed in 2006, between September and December, 20 castaways. We had tribe, four tribes. We sort of touched on that in Panama. Uh, they kept this twist on, but of course, we all remember it. Very controversial twist that got a lot of people talking, divided by race, uh, African-American, Asian-American, Latin American, and white Americans, uh, all divided. And of course, this season brought us so many returning iconic players. It's going to be interesting to see who you choose uh, at the end there for this one. And in the end, Yul Kwon um, beat Ozzy Lush. 4-3, uh, no, sorry, 5-4, <laughs> uh, and also Becky was there, 5-4-0, uh, <laughs> <laughs> introduced the final three. Good job, Ben. I'm a fan of Survivor. Kate, I know you like this season, don't you? Yes, I love this season. It's in my top three, always. Sometimes it's number one, depending on the day of the week. Um, I love this season. I know everyone hates it, and I know why, but I think it has some really strong points. I mean, I think there's a reason. Isn't it, like, the second most 
uh, to Australia for the amount of people that have been com- brought back. Would be sounds um, like It's just. It's really, it has a great cast, and I, it's diverse, and not just within the races, but, like, I feel like with any trace, they really try to get different people. Like, even, like, the white tribe, you have, like, the old Jewish guy, you have the alternative girl, you've got the, like, jock, and then you've got the smart girl next door, and then you've got, like, the flirty skank. Um, <laughs> you know, like, they really tried to round out each group, and... I just think that it the mutiny made it really interesting. Like on a first watch, you're thinking there's no fucking way these four people are gonna make it. And then they do. They like I mean, a four to nine deficit is pretty serious. Yeah, there were some twists and stuff, but it was awesome and Ozzy would just like blow your mind with his like athletic prowess. And then Yule was so smart. So really in the end it was like your quintessential brains versus brawn. And it was just, I think it, it's a really good season. Colleen. Yeah, I think Kate and I will be exact opposites because I really hate the season. Um, <laughs> I, I think hate's probably a strong word. I, I don't view this as low as like my bottom seasons where I'm struggling to rewatch it. I can rewatch this season and enjoy it, but I can't come out of this liking any of the characters really. And I definitely can't come out of it appreciating the game. This is kind of like Pearl Islands for me, but a bad version because it's just an absolute mess of a game, but not really with the redeeming qualities of the entertainment value. I just think that the majority of the characters are kind of dull, and I remember when the season aired, I was really excited for it, and within the first few episodes, I was very much defending this season to other people, but I gave up on it. This was... Pretty much the only time in Survivor I gave up on it. When, as soon as Penner was gone, I stopped watching, and it took me quite a while before I went back and even watched the final episode. So I eh, don't really care for it. Julian? Uh, I kind of like this. Uh, it's become, I've noticed a lot of people don't like this season. And to me, when I first saw it, I thought it was really different with the four tribes. And, and it was, I don't know, it just felt, it, it feels more modern than season 13. I don't know if that's just because pe- lots of people have been brought back or, but it was, I mean, it, it, on a rewatch, it doesn't, yeah, I can see, understand the criticisms a bit, but it, it, it is a bit sort of like, there's a lot of characters, but that's with a 20 person cast. It's hard to get to know all of them and we'll see that a lot from now on. Um, but I, I mean, I love the challenges. I think this season probably has some of the best challenges that we'd seen. I know that's not a huge factor, but still worth mentioning the the water challenges. There's that real physical challenges where they're cl- clinging to a pole and they have to pull them off the pole. And, and yeah, there was a lot of um, a lot of switch ups and twists, and you know that did keep it always. It maybe is you know affected the purity of the game, but it made it definitely pretty interesting to watch for the for, for the first time. Um, one, of, one of the best tribe names of all time, Puka Puka. I just want to point that out. <laughs> I fucking love Puka Puka as the name of a tribe. Uh, yeah, returning players, uh, well, we all know the very famous ones, Ozzy, Penner, Parvati, uh, and there was that other one who returned a couple of times. Um, but <laughs> Candice, we love Candice. Um, and multiple occasions as well. Um, Ozzy, Penner, Parvati, and Candice have all played three times. So um, fascinating that uh, they uh, obviously well regarded enough to come back. Uh, so that is going to make this next question very difficult. The iconic player. Kate, I'm going to start with you this time. God, I really don't know. Um, there's so many ways you could go with this. Um, I guess I guess I'll go with Penner. Okay. Colin? It almost sounded condescending where you're like fascinating that so many people were so well regarded they wanted to bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> you I, I read could, me I well. <laughs> <laughs> I could agree about Penner though because I think that the one thing that people don't understand is again if you're watching the show at the time it aired Penner was a character you hadn't seen before. So and the fact that he's come back every time and his reputation's never taken a hit uh, Penner is amazing. So I'll defend him but not the season. Julian. I'd have to go, I'm not an Aussie fan, but I'd have to go with him because just the fact that he had that underdog story and challenged prowess and took it all the way to the end in this season, he was such a hero. And I think he wasn't really represented a bit like Stephanie. In a, He was represented a little bit differently later on and he wasn't just so, you know, he 
entitled, a bit of a brat. You saw how he really was, but um, he was, yeah, he was pretty iconic in this season. All right, 42 minutes to cover 17 seasons. I think we can do it. Um, Fiji, uh, I love this season. An underrated season, I feel. Um, great. Uh, only season to have odd number of uh, players. 19 people, of course. Uh, the great Melissa McNulty quit before the season even began. Ed, uh, February to May 2007. And the winner of this season, Mr. Earl Cole. The very first unanimous decision in the history of Survivor. Nine zip. He defeated Cassandra mm-hmm, Franklin and Dre Dreams Heard. Julian, Fiji. Yeah, I like this season. Like, I know the have not twist is kind of shit, but um, everything else is pretty good about it, to be honest. There's, there's a, I like the cast. I mean, there's a few, you know, it's diverse. Um, there's some really t- interesting characters with Dreams and Yao Man and... Um, I love the way this season started as well, them just all being dumped together and not knowing what the fuck was going on. They're just like, where's Jeff? Um, and, yeah, there's the car, the car curse. That's pretty pretty memorable. Uh, last time we'd ever see the car challenge. So, yeah, Fiji was a, I mean, was a pretty, I think it's unfairly hated, Ben. Good, good, good answer. Colin? Yeah, a little bit unfairly hated, but some of the hate I think is justified. Uh, I usually find myself defending Fiji more than Cook Islands, obviously. I don't really consider them to be that different. Uh, Fiji is kind of marginally better, mostly because I think the game was much better, and I think that Earl uh, had a much harder win than Yule did. Um, You don't really have a Penner-type character here, but... Yao Min, I think, is on a completely different level. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in Fiji, so slightly better than Cook Islands. Okay. Um, I used to like Fiji. Um, each time I watch it, I hate it more and more. Um, I love Yao Man. Um, there's a few characters I like. I hate the have and have not thing that they've got going on. Like, that's just terrible. Um, I can't stand Dreams. I can't stand Cassandra. Like, there's just so many random boring people that I can't even remember their names. Um, I just I just wasn't into it anymore. Like, I, I used to really like it, and now I, I just hate it. I hate it more and more. Poor Fiji. Yeah, man, the only returning player from this season returned in Micronesia. Um, and, yeah, I think we touched on all the main bits there. Iconic player from this season, Julian? Uh, yeah, man. Kate? Yeah. Colin? Unanimous, yeah, man. Poor Earl. I think just <laughs> one of the greatest wins and underrated winners of all time. Uh, all right, we go from a season that's generally hated to a season that's pretty much universally loved, China. Uh, the 15th season, the halfway point, uh, of how we're meant to be doing this anyway, um, aired between September and December 2007, filmed in China, the first uh, American TV show, I believe, to be ever allowed to be filmed fully in China. 16 contestants, uh, and the winner of the season was the severely underrated, well, not really by Survivor fans, but in terms of never having got the chance to play again, uh, Mr. Todd Herzog defeated Courtney and Amanda 4-2-1 in what would be the only um, final three where everybody got a single vote until Philippines, 10 seasons later. Uh, let's start with you, Colin. China. This is another one where I flip-flopped, and I can't really figure out why, but I really used to dislike China. I think it had a lot to do with coming off of Panama, Cook Islands, and Fiji, where I was just kind of indifferent on the seasons, and maybe I was a bit burned out. I remember I pretty much cancelled my TV subscription at this point, so I was just sort of watching it on YouTube, so maybe it was because I wasn't that invested in it. But going back now, I love China. I I can completely understand why it's one of the best seasons Uh, the game is completely unique here, and it was going back to a more traditional style. Um, so I think this kind of proved that you don't have to keep doing all these twists, and, and I think we should be thankful for that. I mean, this place in history of China is that they came off of Guatemala, where they're bringing back returning players, and Panama, where they're doing the the four tribes and immunity idols, and then Cook Islands, the same thing, and Panama... Uh, China was just sort of back to basics in a way, and the game took a completely different turn. Yeah, Todd's fantastic, and 
James obviously was a great character at the time. Denise, the drama around her, that's all great. <laughs> Julian. Yeah, uh, I think I agree with the back to basics sort of thing. It just shows how when there's such a great cast like this was, and I know I've said that a lot, but 16 players again, pretty much all of them are memorable. Chicken, Ashley, Leslie even. You know, that all the first Dave. I mean, it's there it's so solid and there's you know, the the whole amazing location as well was really refreshing to see them go somewhere like that. Um and I mean when they've got a theme like Chinese culture, they've got so much potential to do stuff in the design of the sets and in the art department and the challenges and it was really, really high budget, glossy season and I think it's always going to be sort of really remembered. And because it's the exact middle point, it's just so memorable. Like James, a lot of returning players we've seen as well. Um, so love China. Kate. Yeah, I love China. Um, I think this is the last season where everyone, like, I, I knew every character. Like, I can still to this day list them off easily because I feel like they really, like, gave you a well-rounded edit, even to, you know, the first person, but it the second person. Um, I think there were some just awesome characters. I love Todd. Um, I love Court. I'm always a fan of the snarky girl. So, I mean, Courtney is hilarious to me. Um, and also just the final tribal council. Like, I don't think we've ever seen anyone kill it like Todd did. That was just like, mm -hmm. and surprisingly, Courtney did very well too, but Todd just like nailed it. So I'm a huge fan going to say um you took the words out of my mouth there kate uh yeah easily one of the last probably seasons of everybody's so memorable and I'd, I'd put this in the top three greatest casts of all time outside of a full returning player season um even you know your sharia's and your your aaron's who you know don't stand out as much as your james's and your and your courtney's um you know i still think of a fantastic character and, and jean robert hello can we not Please just give Jean Robert a bit of a mention. Like, God, love Jean Robert. Uh, returning players from this season, James and Amanda, uh, have both returned. Courtney returned, of course, in Heroes vs. Villains. And we're about to see PG return, which is, I'm um, very looking forward to that, in Cambodia. Uh, Julian, iconic player from China. Um, let's go with James this time. Colin. Uh, I think Todd. Kate. I'm going to go. Amanda. All right, good spread there. All right, considering now that we're at the halfway point in terms of the 30 seasons, I will say that my quick calculations has told me that with 15 seasons to go in the space of 30-odd uh, minutes gives us about 2.3 minutes to talk about each season and gives you each about 0 0.7 minutes to talk about each season. So let's see how we go with that. Uh, <laughs> Micronesia. Let's head now to, again, one of the universally greatest seasons of all time, always in our top five. Um, seasons in our Oscars uh, aired between February May 2008 20 castaways 10 of them returning it was fans versus favourites 10 of them new and uh, Poverty Shallow won the season uh, defeating Amanda Kimmel 5-3 to three in a final 2 uh, and some say obviously robbed Suri of a victory if it had been a final 3 I need to shut up in my introductions because they're way too long Julian Micronesia yeah I have to be a party pooper with this one I don't really I think it's really, really, really overrated. Like, I just can't get into it on a rewatch, and I don't know what it is. It's hard to hard to describe. I, I just not... A lot of the people they brought back, I wasn't really that into seeing again. I didn't really need to see James and Amanda again straight away. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's some pretty epic and iconic moments, and all that with a fucking stick and I love that Eliza's back but the fan tribe's pretty shit I like the fact that it doesn't go according to plan it's a bit of a hot mess over there so that's good but I don't know re-watching it I was just I was just not feeling it and it's been a bit like that for me okay see I feel like it, it pretty much holds up to the hype there there's a lot going on in this season you know what I mean like there are a lot of twists and turns and strategy and it's just I don't know, there's big characters and people that you didn't think would be characters become them. Um, the fans, I agree, are a little lackluster, but I I think that's kind of... In this season, I enjoy them getting run over. I think it's kind of funny. Um, later on, when it happens over and over, it's just annoying. But 
for the first time, I, I enjoyed watching them just, like, getting trampled on by the veterans. <laughs> Colin? Yeah, my opinion is very similar. I think that this is a season, if you're watching them in order, it's a fun season to watch because there is a lot of good stuff that happens. But I've always wondered if this aired after Caramoan, would anybody like it? Because everything that people hate about Caramoan is the same thing here. I mean, it's just a season set up so that these returning players, most of which where you question why they're returning, can just completely blow through these, uh, you want to call them fans. And it's it's kind of not a fun season to watch uh, post Caramoan because you see a lot of the flaws that would come later on. And uh, I mean, it goes even as far as that Ozzy's given challenges that he was successful at in his first season, <laughs> and they're giving it to him on a second try against newbies. It's not really a fair season, and I don't hate it. I think it's very fun. It's entertaining. But if you're looking at it in the grand scheme of Survivor, it's not really that great. Yeah, I, I, sorry, Kate, I'm not getting enough on you, but yeah, I've always said it's a bit overrated in terms of its love. Um, again, not saying it's a horrible season, but um, yeah, I don't think it's as great as everyone pointed out to be. Uh, future appearances, well, look, we're only going to really say Eric, of course, in terms of original player, not counting the returning players who return again. Um, iconic player, Colin? The obvious answer would be Parvati, but I don't think you can really get past how Eliza uh, improved her reputation and just her fan base from not a lot of time on this season, so I'm going to go with Eliza. Okay. Um, I'd say Parvati for the exact same reason. She was like, what the fuck is she doing here? And then she turned around and just like owned that shit, so, yeah. <laughs> Julian. Yeah, I'll give it to Parvati as well. All right. Gabon. Noah's uh, getting angry that he's not here for this one. He loves himself some Gabon. Uh, first season in high definition. We return to Africa, air between September and December 2008. 18 castaways. And uh, the winner was Bob Crowley, 4-3 to three over Susie Smith and Jessica Sugar Kuiper, of course. Um, she had zero votes. And uh, special mention, of course, if it wasn't for Julian from this season, we probably wouldn't exist. So thank you, Julian for being on this season and making us exist. Colin, Gabon. I'll represent Noah well here. I love Gabon. I love Gabon almost as much as I love Vanuatu and Africa. This is such a good season. And again, this is an example of how you can have a train wreck of a game and have the season play out well. Um, I'll defend Sugar all day. I think that Sugar is one of the most fascinating characters we've ever seen. Uh, I can't say enough good things. I mean, the Everything that happened here was a mistake as far as how the game goes, but yet somehow it works, and it's so entertaining. Julian? Yeah, there's so many twists and turns in this season. I, I love it. I love the, uh, here we go, location again. It's remiss not to mention these, this grassland savanna that's brilliant, verdant green, you know, like, ah, uh, so amazing. Anyway, um, yeah, it's it's great. It The characters, Sugar's a train wreck kenny is yeah what an underdog story um even the fact Susie gets undetected so far it's just an unconventional feeling season and you know with the two tribes which i know that sort of is a bit of a, a criticized thing about it but there's all there's so much going on and for it, it really works for me I, I like pretty much all of the cast as well so yeah okay I just rewatched this season when we were doing the rankings, and it was painful. Like, this is a terrible season. I wow. hate everyone, except for, like, the people you're supposed to dislike. Even Dan K. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Him and his paranoia. And, yeah. What? Oh, gosh. Get off this podcast. <laughs> like, I like Corinne and Randy, which you're supposed to, I think, dislike them, but I think they're hilarious. Um, but it's just a terrible season. Everyone is just so unlikable and stupid, and I'm just not into it. And that's what Noah gets for calling Boston Robin overrated turd this morning. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's how I feel about that. I, I really feel that we need to never mention Corinne on this podcast again. That's not to take away from Corinne. I fucking <laughs> love Corinne. Thanks, but, Paul. Uh, thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, returning players, of course, uh, Randy, Sugar, both returned, and Corinne uh, returned. All right, iconic player. Uh, Kate, you, you love this season. So you yeah, can... I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say Corinne because I hate everyone else. Julian. Uh, Sugar. Colin. 
Sugar, one of the iconic players of all time. No one said dead, K. You're all fired. <laughs> um, token change here. That's boring. Let's go to some... No, I'm kidding. Uh, token change. <laughs> uh, 2009 it aired, February to May. We went back to uh, Brazil and uh, we had uh, 16 cards. So it's a little bit of a return almost to kind of classic Survivor, similar to what we were talking about China, I feel. And um, we had uh, what a lot of people argue to be the closest or maybe the most perfect game in terms of JT defeated Steven 7 nothing. Uh, didn't get a vote against him and, of course, uh, won the fan favourite. So uh, is it the perfect game? Who knows? Token Sheens, uh, Julian, and, of course, how did I not mention the birth of Coach? Yeah, I'm, I don't know about this. This probably has to be in the middle somewhere. Like, I, I don't... It's a little bit boring to re-watch as well. Like, I've only re-watched part of it. I just... I gave up. Um, but... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting to the point where it's like... Yeah, it's got some good things about it, but... It was I love Sandy. Yeah, I like Sandy. She was pretty cray-cray. <laughs> oh, great. Cool. Sandy love. Uh, Kate... <laughs> Um, yeah, this season in the middle for me. I, I rewatched it recently as well, and it, it was better than I remembered. Um, there's some great characters in it. I've just never been overly impressed with JC's win, especially like you know he, Stephen didn't get a single vote, but then you watch it and Stephen did so much, and it was like I just think JT gets a little too much credit, and then you see him play by himself in Heroes of Villains, and clearly he needs a little help. So. I mean, it's it's a good season. There's some great characters that come of it, but overall, it's me. Okay, Colin. Yeah, I think that Steven definitely deserves more credit, but I wouldn't say that uh, JT is overrated in any way. I think this is a refreshing season, especially if you're watching the seasons in order, because it was more back to basics. But it had good twists like the, the double um, exile thing and the exile alliance, even though it didn't play out. I mean, it was such an interesting idea. So many good characters here. It is definitely a middle season. Um, I My opinion has improved on it over the years, but I really just think that JT deserves, in a way, more credit because I think that Heroes versus Villains has tainted people's opinion. Steven might have been better, but for either of those guys to make it even close to the end was an absolute miracle. So I think they deserve credit for that. Returning players, of course, JT, Heroes vs. Villains, we mentioned that. Uh, Coach and Tyson, not just the birth of Coach, got to mention Tyson, of course. Uh, two extremely memorable players. Uh, Tyson, of course, a future winner of the season, of the show, I should say. Um, and, yeah, we're about to see Stephen, a very long-awaited return, people would say, uh, come back for Cambodia. So looking forward to seeing how Stephen goes on a, um, a second turnaround. Kate, iconic player. Got to say Coach. Got to be, surely. Colin? I'm not a fan of him, but I have to agree, Coach. Julian? Yes, Coach, indeed. All right, Samoa. Uh, we, we're basically getting now to the point of Survivor where let's film in the same location over and over again. Um, but, uh, yes, yeah, Samoa, the 19th season, uh aired uh, September to December 2009. We had 20 contestants. The last season, you would argue, that just didn't have a twist that sort of was sold on. You know, every season post-Samoa has had some twist at the beginning of the game. This was kind of like your last normal season. But uh, it wasn't normal in the fact that we had the birth of, uh, you'd probably say, the most uh, talked about and most polarising character in the history of Survivor, Russell Hans. You either love him or you hate him. And uh, he finished his season as runner-up to, some might argue, uh, one of the most talked about winners and not really for the good parts. Uh, Natalie White, she won this season 7-2-0. Uh, and of course the forgotten uh, final tribal council member, uh, Mick Feckless Trimming. Um, Julian, Samoa. Yeah, I, I just re-watched a lot of Samoa recently, and um, I enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would. It sort of seemed to flow quite nicely. Like, there's, sure, there's a lot of people that you forget, um, and, you know, there's 20 contestants again. And But, but I don't know, I thought it was fairly enjoyable. Um, I liked the two different, you know, the, the comeback of the, the Thoa Thoa, and, you know, that was never expected to happen, that they would, you know, dominate like that in the end, and... And just how it sort of started, um, you didn't really see much of Galoo at all. So that was, yeah, I thought it held up pretty well on a rewatch. So um, there's a lot to enjoy there. Colin? Yeah, the reputation for Samoa is that 
it's just all a Russell season. You know, when it first aired, everybody loved it. And then everybody got tired of Russell and everybody started hating it. Survivor really depends on what you go into the episode looking for. And if you're looking for a season dominated by Russell, you'll probably be annoyed. But I think I kind of went into this rewatching it looking for the other characters. And if you are intentionally looking for them, you find a lot of other great characters here. Laura and Shambo and uh, uh, Eric and um, Jason. I mean, I think I'm... If you're going to compare the two seasons, you know, this versus Redemption Island, I think this is a, a more interesting game. I think it's a more interesting season. And I think people need to realize that it's not as much of the Russell show, just based on confessionals, maybe. But other than that, it's not as much of the Russell show as people think. It's a pretty decent season. Kate? I mean, I think it is the Russell show. But um, the thing about this season is I actually really respect Russell's game. And this one, I think he did things that people hadn't done before. Um, not necessarily all of them were nice, but, you know, they were interesting and innovative. Um, I think Russell's game gets overshadowed by, you know, him repeating the exact same thing. But if you look at this, like, you know, in a vacuum, it's actually, it's a great game. And it's different than anything we had seen before. So, fuck Natalie White. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's going to get comments. Uh, Russell, of course, has returned <laughs> twice. Um, uh, and then it seemed the only way you could return from Samara was if your name was Russell, because then Russ Swan came back again in Philippines. But we've since changed that. Laura Moret came back for Blood vs. Water. And uh, Monica Padilla is returning for Survivor Cambodia. Words I thought I'd probably never say in my entire life. But uh, 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 iconic player. Dare I even ask this question? Are we all in agreement? Is it Russell? Anybody just want to chime in with anything different, or are we just going to stick with Russell? Stick with it. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yep. yep. That's easy. All right. Heroes vs. Villains. Uh, it is a season that pretty much is considered the greatest of all time. Has won the Oscar for that every year except for the year that Kagayan took it. Uh, 20 castaways. Uh, second full returning player season. A pitted heroes. Heroic survivor players up against villainous survivor players. The likes of Daniel DiLorenzo, of course. Um, aired between February and May 2010. And, of course, memorable for the fact that we had our very first two-time winner and our only two-time winner, Sandra Diaz Twine, took it out six three zip over poverty who very nearly also became a two-time winner and russell hans kate can we talk about heroes versus villains in about 30 seconds go <laughs> um yeah heroes vs. villains is an awesome season it's great everyone came out to play i mean first challenge they're breaking each other's bones and shit so um i love it it holds up yeah great colin <laughs> This season proves that uh, the only reason All Stars isn't loved is because everybody came basically to be a big baby on television. Because everybody here had the right attitude going into the game. There's nothing different about how the game progressed or how the people played or how dirty it was. It's just nobody was taking it personally, and that made this such a good season to have the best players of all time or some of the best players of all time and have them just treat it like a game. I mean, this was full respect of the game, and I think that's why everybody loves it. Julian? Yeah, this was so much fun to watch. There's so many epic idle plays and blind sides, and I love the fact that they have a really late merge this season as well. Um, that's pretty cool to see, you know, the heroes and the villains fighting it out, and, and the way that they, you know, the theme is really good. They, they do embrace a little bit their, you know, their tribe, and, you know, the villains' tribe... It's just so much fun with the characters on there. Like, it's a dream cast, and it's just the fact that, oh, there's just so much, there's so much happens, and it's it's just great. It's just great. Uh, I love it. Returning players, of course, well, they've, you know, been a couple. We're not really going out in returning player seasons. Uh, here's the interesting question, though. The iconic player from Heroes vs. Villains, Julian. Oh, God. Um, well... <laughs> uh, can I say Jerry again? Love Please her. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, props to Jerry. Got to give props to Jerry's she game. Played that awesome game this time. It's so nice to see. Kate. Um, I mean, I gotta give it to Sandra for winning twice. That's just impressive. Colin. 
Yeah, the fact that Sandra wasn't even brought up as an iconic player for Pearl Islands, but here she was with probably less screen time shows how strong Sandra is. Yep. All right. I should have mentioned too, also, filmed in Samoa, back-to-back seasons. All right, moving into our final 10 seasons. Some of these we probably will gel over quite quickly because, uh, well, we know why. Uh, Nicaragua uh, aired uh, September to December 2010, 20 castaways. Uh, Old vs. Young took them 21 seasons to do that, and uh, sadly they've never done it again. We had the greatest twist of all time in the Medallion of Power, and we had the greatest player of all time in Purpy Ke- Purple Purpy. Purple Kelly Shin and um, Judd Fabio Bertza won this season 5-4 over Chase Bryce and Matthew Sash Lennon. Lenahan uh, was also there. And the last season that we've seen that has been decided by one vote, Julian Nicaragua. I really bloody well like Nicaragua. And I, <laughs> I actually saw it like when I had my massive break for Survivor. I saw Guatemala pretty early on and Nicaragua pretty early on. And maybe that's why I like them both so much because they got me really back into Survivor. But I've rewatched Nicaragua since and I still loved it. I love the, that there's a lot of old players again. Um, and, yeah, good good impressions of the season. That There's a few sort of – I don't like the whole – I hated Sash. I, really, I still do. Um, <laughs> but, but, yeah, no, it was a good season. Okay. Uh I am, this season is lackluster for me. It's never done it. I mean, I guess I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I, I know I hate Chase Rice. He's so wishy-washy. It just drove me fucking nuts. You've I missed him. I like, supposed to like him, but <laughs> it's it's annoying. Um, the winner, I was like kind of like, huh? But okay. Uh, the cast, no one really. I mean, there was a few, but I like Marty. I like it, but overall, it's just meh. Okay, Colin. It's a ridiculous game. It's a terrible game. It doesn't have a good outcome. But like I said before, if you go into a season of Survivor on a rewatch looking to find something different, I mean, you'll find something different here. And there's a lot of really great moments. Uh, Jane throwing the water on the fire and just everything about how absurd Fabio is as a winner. I mean, I don't think you have to go into every season and look for it to be, wow, this was such a smart game. Sometimes you can be like, this was a dumb game, but it was kind of fun to watch in a morbid way. And I think that's kind of the way I look at Nicaragua. And of course, great iconic moments, which I'm sad you didn't mention. Purple Kelly talking about wanting to milk her own milk. Um, Well, uh, (laughs) Purpy Kelly was a little bit more memorable. (laughs) Uh, Yes. Uh, Hello, Purpy Kelly, if you're listening. (laughs) (laughs) I fucking love Nicaragua. It's such a uh, such a good season and suffered a lot, of course, from uh, uh, the highs of heroes versus villains and uh, obviously a big down. It's a similar way that I'll argue about San Juan del Sur after Cagayan. But, um, yeah, Brenda Lowe, the only returning player from this season. She returned, of course, to Karen Moen. Uh, all right, iconic player, Julian. Um, it's There's no one real epic iconic player this season, but... Hey. I th- I think Nayonka is pretty... She had so many confessionals for for going on day 28 when she did. She was just hogging the show up until that point. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give it to her. Kate? Um, I guess Marty. Why not? Travesty that Marty wasn't on the second chances uh, list, I will say. I Colin? See. I agree that Marty is the best. But, again, like you don't always have to go into it looking for it to be great. I mean... For better or worse, Nayanka was the standout character, so I'll agree with Julian. All right. Um, yeah, season 22. Season 22. <laughs> season two. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be talking very long for this season. Redemption Island. Uh, <laughs> season 22. Uh, filmed in Nicaragua. Uh, again, we had uh, returning players mixed with new players. Russell and Rob returned. Rob for his fourth time. Aired between February and May 2011. Universally panned as the worst season in the history of Survivor. Colin... Uh-huh. Colin, have we got to defend this season at all? No, I mean, this season was what everybody expected. It was, let's hand Rob a million dollars. Um, it's, it's the worst season <laughs> for a reason. But let's just at least say, like, I'm going to go on record and say, Stephanie Valencia, one of my favorite characters of all time, bring her back, please. Uh, give her a chance to win in a se- give Give Stephanie Valencia a million dollar season. 
Rob Mariano defeated Philip Shepard 8-1, and Natalie Tenerelli was there, and the birth of Philip. What a fucking legend he was. All right, Kate, come on. Get get the uh, get the moisture flowing. <laughs> Are you really saying this is the worst season ever when we're about to talk about South Pacific? I mean, Jesus Yes. Christ. <laughs> Ah, fucking, it's not as bad as everyone says. I get the, I mean, the reason people don't like it is because Rob is so fucking epic that it makes it boring because he was so goddamn good that it was like everyone else is a joke. Yeah. You did say it made it boring, right? (laughs) No, fuck off. <laughs> like, there's just so many the little she's nuances that he did that is the reason why he's so much better than everyone else. I mean, this shit when like he wants to get the idol and every other dumbass is just searching for it or like waits till people walk away. No, he literally creates a thing to get people to go all the way the fuck away. Then he fakes having to like have a bathroom problem, runs off, finds idol, and no one knows any better. Like genius, just little things that people don't give him enough credit for. Um, also, there's so many characters from this that, like, you know, for a season that's so hated, you've got, you know, Andrea. There were some really interesting people. Philip, who is a nut job, but whatever. I mean, Francesca, the best first boot ever. So, I mean, like, I I think I get why it's hated on, but fuck all of you. I, l- I love how your, like, voice raised a couple of octaves there, just of how passionate you are of this season. <laughs> Wow, okay. Uh, Julian, anything to add on uh, this? It's just most of the cast I don't didn't like. I just It was frustrating to see that, like, Rob did play really well and he did think of everything, but at the same time, there's both sides of that. Like, he, people did on his tribe really weren't wise to, to it like the other tribe were wanting to get rid of Russell. And, and it's just unfortunate because most of the people on the Zapatero tribe were really pretty much unlikable apart from Stephanie Valencia and, and yeah, I mean, I, I even got pretty frustrated with Matt Elrod, you know, that's arc of him and then just going straight back. I mean, some people think that's funny, but I thought that was really unsatisfying and I don't know. I think Grant was a, just a weak player and he just didn't stand up to Rob and that was just shit. And so there's a lot of disappointments. Just, you know, yeah. Got to mention the Redemption Island twist, uh, big big deal of course you voted out of the game you go to redemption island and you have a chance to battle your way back into it and uh yeah not really highly regarded by many in survivor but um i've seen some interesting um defense of it so yeah anyway uh returning players philip shepherd andrew behelke uh, belke and uh, francesca hoagie of course returned to caramoan and uh natalie and stephanie very close to coming back on cambodia and colin still crying about it that uh oh. stephanie didn't uh iconic player julian uh, Boston, Rob. Kate? Rob. And Colin? Uh, yeah, it's Rob. And I should say, I love Rob. Just uh, three times is enough. Got to be in- interesting that the basically three out of the four seasons he was on, I think that unanimously puts him out there as an iconic player of the season. So there you go, Kate. Um, yeah, t- takes a bit of the love away from number 12 on the uh, rankings list. Not too Don't soon. Too soon. Um, all right, South Pacific. We've got nine minutes. We'll reach two hours, folks. We can do this. Um, South Pacific. Yeah, it was filmed in the South Pacific in Samoa. Um, Ed in 2011, similar premise to, uh, Nicar- uh, to, to Redemption Island, sorry, uh, where we had two returning players, Coach and Aussie. Um, very interesting choices to come back and battle it against uh, new players. And um, we had uh, the winner, Sophie Clark, defeated uh, Coach and Albert 6-3 Zip. Kate, uh, well, you just said this was the worst season of all time, so let's start with you. And This season blows. I mean, it's just like, Sophie is a troll, first of all. Um, <laughs> but... Let's just be serious here. Um, I actually, I think Coach plays an interesting game, other than the fact that he brings in this whole religion thing, and that just, like, nothing gets religion, but I just don't think it belongs in Survivor, and it just overshadows everything and taints his game, and it's just... And Brandon, I actually find Brandon intriguing, but he annoys the fuck out of me at the same time. <laughs> um, there's so many duds, also. Um, people like Ozzy that I sort of liked in previous seasons he's like having people sleep in the dirt and like it's just it's it's a nightmare uh, there's a few interesting people like jim rice and um 
But that's, that's, yeah, everyone else is just annoying. It sucks. Call him. Yeah, the season does blow. Um, <laughs> it blows really hard. Uh, <laughs> I think that this stands over Redemption Island for one reason, the merge episode. Um, I don't care for Coach's game. I don't care for Coach in any of the seasons. But how he handled Cochran, it made for incredible TV. And that one episode really does stand out. You put that in another season and people think it's one of the best episodes of all time. Uh, remove that episode from the season and it probably is as bad as Redemption Island. But overall, it's just slightly better. Julian? Yeah, I pretty much hate this as well. Like, I just so frustrating that they have to bring Coach... Um, and Aussie back for a third time. It would have been so much better to see uh, another couple of players play for a second time here. I, I don't like how they went down that route. I don't like that Redemption Island was back. Um, I did like that the tribes were fairly even, evenly matched. So that sort of kept the bit of suspense up. But after that, I fucking hate Sophie's win. I thought it was so shit. She was just maybe maybe that's a little unfair because her edit was not the best as well. But yeah, I couldn't get invested in this at all. Shit. All right. Uh, Brandon, uh, Cochran, and Dawn return for Caramel. And, of course, Cochran went on to win. Uh, Jim and Michaela were on the poll for Cambodia. Neither got uh, listed. And, of course, most famously, uh, Whitney and Keith returned for the Amazing Race 6 and 25. And Ugh. Colin fucking loved it, didn't you, Colin? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, I had to mention it. All right. Iconic player. Let's start with you, Kate. Palmer Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you answer that one. Uh, Colin. Yeah, again, I'm not a fan, but Philip. And Julian. Uh, Philip, we... hang on. What? Oh, are we talking about 22 or. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm... <laughs> I'm going to let you get away with that. <laughs> We're so stuck here. Um, no, I'm uh, Brandon. Brandon. Uh, Julian. <laughs> um, I have to go for this season, Cochrane. All right. Uh, we've got five minutes to talk about six seasons. Um, okay, uh, seven seasons, actually. Uh, to me, the I, I said it nearly with Thailand, but I backtracked because, to me, this is the most underrated season of all time, and people can shit all over me all you like, but I'm going to defend it forever. Um, One World, uh, filmed in Samoa again, aired in uh, February to May 2012, 18 castaways, men versus women, and the big twist, of course, One World, they lived on the same beach at least for a day before they changed it all up, but um, made it such a fascinating season. The winner, um, often considered one of the greatest players of all time, Kim Spradlin, defeated Sabrina Thompson and Chelsea Myers in a 7-2 zip. Uh, Julian, give me your thoughts of One World in about 30 seconds. Go. Yeah, it's... It's pretty interesting. There's a lot of interesting things here, and I, I quite like it. And Kim was dominant as all hell, and I don't think her competition was shit. I just think she was awesome. So, yeah. Good. I like how quick that was. Kate? <laughs> um, I think it's it's kind of a boring season, but I think it has a lot to do with the fact that Kim was so good. I think that similar to Redemption Island, I think when someone steamrolls their way to the end, it isn't as interesting whether or not it's good or not. So, yeah. Call him. The second half is kind of boring, but the problem I have is that the first half is so hard to get through, and I've tried re-watching this so many times, and I always end up giving up before we even get to the merge because I just don't like watching it. It's just it's it's unpleasant for the first half, and uh, I like some of the players. Like I think Alicia, even though she's a very miserable character to watch, I mean she's very interesting, but it's just it's not a fun season. I uh, I re this is the most recent season I've rewatched, and I just gripped on every episode. Um, How is it every time we record, you're always like, I just rewatched One World. Because <laughs> I rewatch it all the time. It's, it's so good. Cat, uh, Colton, and Monica all return for Blood First Water. Uh, special props. Hello, Colton. Um, everyone loves him. Um, I do. Uh, <laughs> and um, Troy Zan and Sabrina were on the cast for Cambodia, but never were chosen. Troy Zan robbed so much of not coming back on. And most importantly, uh, Michael Jefferson uh, went on to compete on Naked and Afraid. Uh, <laughs> I just thought I would quickly point that out. Iconic player, Colin. Kim. Kate. Kim. Julian. Uh, Colton. Oh, good answer. All right. Uh, from a couple of seasons in a row that generally are uh, hated, we get to a season which I feel is fairly well loved and probably in most people's top 10, top 15, at least, Philippines. Um, and we had... The return back to three tribes. We had uh, the big twist here being that 
three returning players uh, came back, all of whom had been medically evacuated. Uh, the most famous, of course, Mike Scoopin, finally got his second chance after 23 seasons. At that time, was the longest gap in between uh, playing the first time and the second time. Jonathan Pennant came back for a third time, and, of course, Russell Swan came back for a second time. The winner of this season was Denise Stapley, who held the record for attending every single tribal council. She defeated uh, Lisa Welchel and Mike Scoopin, 6-1-1, and uh, this, incidentally, was filmed in the Philippines, funnily enough. Um, Colin, uh, Philippines. You know, I think if seasons 21 through 24 proved anything, it's that no matter how bad the show gets, the fans are going to stick with Survivor. But you do have to ask yourself, where would the show be now without Philippines? This was a very important season. Uh, it brought a lot of people back to liking the show. I don't even know, looking at the ratings, whether it improved at all, but people liked the show again. And I think that's really important. And I love this season. I, I do think it's a great season. Maybe in my top five, maybe just out my top five. But it's so strong, and you had so many good characters. And overall, after the previous four seasons, this was just likable Survivor again. Just quickly on your point, ratings did improve. Uh, most of them were above 10 million. Uh, the finale was up on One World, and the premiere was up on One World. There you go. Kate? Uh, yeah, I love this season. I'm a huge fan of the Three Tribe format. I think it always makes things a little more interesting. Um, I love that it continued the whole One Tribe getting Matt Singh. Or it was just it was beautiful. Just a disaster of epic proportions, and Malcolm is just so goddamn hot. <laughs> oh, like thank that season just for that. Um, yeah, and I love that it kind of. I love the bringing back the people that were medevaced. I thought that was interesting, and I like that Mike Scoopin's like god complex that everyone kind of had about him kind of got brought down a little bit, which made me happy because I was always sick of that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I like that season. Julian. Oh, I love Philippines. The three tribes, the fact that Tandang doesn't even go to tribal council until the merge, so they're all there still. There's so many good characters. Abby, um, new location for once again. Um, and it was pretty tough season as well, like all the rain that they had. Penna is awesome. Um, it's just got, yeah, like Colin said, it's just got you liking Survivor again, and it was just fun and um there's just, yeah, so many, so much going on as well. So, oh, and Denise as well. She's probably one of my favorite winners. She, like, to go to every single tribal council and be still there just is a testament to how strong her game was. It's September to December 2012, didn't mention that. And uh, returning players, uh, Malcolm uh, returned, of course, for Karamoan, making. Uh, Kate, a very uh, happy person. RC was meant to return on Blood vs. Water. She was all set to go, but unfortunately her father, Craig, um, was pulled at the last minute due to allegedly high blood pressure. But, of course, you can download the recap we did with those two uh, during San Juan del Sur, and they go into that a little bit more. And Abby Maria is about to return for Survivor Cambodia. Iconic player, Kate. Uh, Malcolm. Colin. Malcolm. Julian. Um, yes, Malcolm. And we barely talked about Lisa Welchel. I'm happy. All right, Karim Owen. Um, the uh, last time we would see returning players until uh, season uh, 27. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got ahead of myself there. Um, fans versus favourites, two, uh, ten fans versus ten, quote, favourites, unquote. Um, filmed in the Philippines, 20 castaways, aired at the uh, beginning of 2013. I believe this might be the biggest gap between when it was actually filmed and when it aired, although uh, season 32 might break that record. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the winner of this season, John Cochran, defeated Dawn Meehan and Sherry, uh, by, I can never say her last name, 8-zip-zip. And, um, yeah, that was Karim Owen, a season that's not very well liked. Colin, uh, much to say about Karim Owen? Uh, I just want to go on record and say that I do think that Micronesia is a much better season than Karamoan, um, but I stand by my statement that you know either of those seasons airing now, uh, people are going to dislike it. I think that if Karamoan aired earlier, people liked it a little bit better. Micronesia airs later, people like it less. I just, I hate the fans versus favorites format. I, I think that it's a terrible idea. Uh, I think it's basically like Redemption Island. It's hand one of our favorites a million dollars, and I don't think it ever works out. I think some things about this season are slightly better than Micronesia, mostly the fans try, but overall, I mean, the season just sucks. <laughs> Kate? Um, I would hate this season if it wasn't for Malcolm, and not just because he's hot, but because he, he he made things interesting for a while. 
You know, like, I think that there were some moments, like, that you were, like, on the edge of your seat. And then it went back to being boring. And I agree that the fans are, well, can we really even call them fans? Like, is that a serious thing? <laughs> um, they're random people that were cast. Um, but it's, 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 it's not as bad as everyone shits on it. It's just me. It's Again. Me. All right. Good description. Julian, anything to add? Yeah, I don't re- I didn't like it. I didn't like the brand and the way whole that treat was treated like by the show. I thought that was really sketchy. Um, I thought that the fans tribe was just shit. And I didn't really like any of the favorites. They were all from like shit seasons. Like <laughs> that why do we yeah, like go back earlier and get favorites again. Like don't go from season twenty two and twenty three and just ugh, yeah, no. No. All right, beautiful. Uh, arguably the worst reunion of all time, although it might be um, debated that in Worlds Apart. We'll get to that. Um, future players, returning players, well, uh, we haven't had any. Uh, the originals, I will say, um, none of them have returned uh, since. So, um, yeah, there's uh, plenty of time for that to happen. No doubt. Uh, iconic player, Julian. Um, Philip. Uh, Kate. Um, Malcolm. Colin. Malcolm, and not just because he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> wow, no Cochrane love at all. Uh, all right, Blood vs. Water. Uh, a very interesting twist. The twist was hated when it was first announced, but it uh, brought a lot of people around. The return of Redemption <laughs> Island. We saw uh, 10... Uh, returning players play with their loved ones um, in uh, what was a, a groundbreaking twist, a very interesting twist, and it turned out fairly okay. Aired uh, September to December 2013. This season filmed in the Philippines, but a different part of the Philippines, uh, sort of the other end of the country, but um, still there. And, of course, uh, well-known, as we said before, RC and her dad had to pull out, replaced by Candace and John. Um, they at least kind of had backups this time around where they wouldn't in a couple of seasons' time. Uh, Tyson Apostle won this season ahead of Mon- Monica Culpepper and Jervis Peterson. 7-1 zip. Julian, thoughts on Blood vs. Water? Yeah, this is really, really... Re- like, I absolutely hated the idea of it pre-season as well. I was like, oh, don't just keep fucking things up here. Um, but it was really refreshing and it just worked on so many different levels. Um, and it was a pretty good cast as well. Like, even the, the loved ones really stood up as great characters. So, um, not to mention the Purple Rock came back. Um, I did think Tyson's win was a little bit boring towards the end, but um, that didn't really detract from the season, in my view. I still loved it all the way through. So, there, there was some pretty... This is when Survivor Challenges have really started to go downhill for me, though, but that doesn't really matter that much either. Well, it does when they're all shit. Um, Kate... <laughs> Yeah, I think this twist worked surprisingly well the first time. It was really, I think it was better with the uh, having, you know, your favorites kind of come back with their loved ones because you already knew someone, so you could kind of relate them. Um, I also think Redemption Island, surprisingly, in the pre-merge, I think it worked really, really well and it made things interesting. I think it would have been better if they had got rid of it at the merge. But um, I, I was, I liked the season, but it's, just, I don't know that the blood versus water thing is something they should repeat over and over. Colleen? I think that the Redemption Island did take away a bit, just because this was an entertaining game, and like Philippines, it was likable Survivor after Caramon. And having Redemption Island, period, is just too much screen time. I mean, one quarter of every single episode was dedicated to that, where I would have rather seen what was going on in the camps. Because this was a good season and it had a good cast. It's basically the same thing as Fans vs. Favorites. And it, on a rewatch, it suffers from the same issues. It's a setup for a favorite to a win. Even with family members, there's not a lot of chance. But Sierra is such a good character. Uh, one of my all-time favorite characters. And yes, there are flaws to her game, but I can also defend most of those flaws. I think that she's incredible. I can't wait to see what happens when she comes back next time. By the time this airs, maybe <laughs> uh, I'll be look like an idiot. But uh, no, it's it's a decent season. It's a fun season. If I'm going to compare this to both Micronesia and Caramoan, I prefer this over the two. But on a rewatch, suffers from the same problems. It's not really a fun game to watch. 
Special props to my girl, Monica, who uh, gets no love from anyone in the world. Um, and Jervis, we should mention, longest time between filming seasons until, of course, uh, we're about to see that broken again uh, in season 31. Uh, future appearances, Vetus and Sierra are set to appear on uh, Cambodia. And Brad Culpepper was robbed. I would just want to point that out because I love me some Brad. And Tyson and Rachel uh, appeared on the fourth season of Marriage Boot Camp, which just happened to be on TV the other day when I was flicking channels. But, um, yeah, I didn't see much of Tyson and uh, Rachel. Uh, iconic player, Colin, I think I know your answer for this one. Sierra. Kate. Tyson. And Julianne. Uh, I'll go with Vetus for this one. Vetus Bushkakis. Okay. Um, oh, doggy. Hello, doggy. Um, yeah. he, he loves a bit of Vetus as well. Jesus. All right. Uh, <laughs> Kagayan. Uh, Philippines again. It was filmed. Um, we had Brains, Bronze, Beauty, Three Tribes Split, aired uh, February to May 2014. Um Universally considered one of the greatest seasons of all time, considering it's still very new. Recency bias, recency bias. Shut up, it's a good season. Um, and <laughs> I'm turning into Kate all of a sudden. Uh, the winner of this season was Doddy. He defeated Wu. Wow, it's uh, been a long time since I've heard that. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long Not term. Long enough. <laughs> it's been a long time since you heard Wu. And who the hell voted for Wu? Um, 8 1. Um, the birth of Cass, the birth of so much. Um, so much to chat about with Kagayan, but we're already nine minutes over. So, uh, Colin, um, yeah, pizza quote? What? No, we haven't mentioned that. Anyway, uh, Kagayan, <laughs> Colin. Uh, I think we're all on board that Philippines, in a way, was kind of the season of Save Survivor. But as we said at the beginning, we're not really going to have as much love for, as we do for those early seasons. And I think, at least for me, this is the one season that comes the closest. This is just as good as some of those early seasons. And, uh, recency bias you know forget that there's, there's no way that the love for the season is going away because it's just such a good season and you don't have the complaints about returning players or you know too many twists or whatever i mean the cast is so good here and again i've stated the importance before about the cast just not taking it personally and uh, everything about this season works it's unbelievable uh, yeah, I should also mention, you, know, you mentioned about the no returning players. Uh, first time since One World that we had no returning players after such a long stretch of returning players coming back. Kate Kagayan. Yeah, um, I usually make a concerted effort not to annoy my friends with that don't watch Survivor by talking about it, but I could not shut the fuck up about this season. <laughs> I kept bugging them. like It was just so good. I loved it. So recency bias my ass. It was a good season. <laughs> Um, Tony should not have been able to pull off what he did, but he did, and it was great. And there were just so many amazing characters. I could go on for a while, but I won't. So, yeah. Julian, yeah, probably my favorite, one of my favorite Survivor characters of all time in Cass, um, and the Merge episode, one of the best ever. Um, so, so much to love about the season. Probably the cast and and the. The, the hot mess of the Brains tribe and, yeah, everything is good. Um, and it, like the other said, it's not recency bias because it's still, I, I don't see the love going anywhere. We have a three-hour and three-minute podcast uh, talking about this for the Ozcap, so I download that. And uh, until the Dan interview, our longest interview in the history of Survivor Oz came from Cass's mouth. So, um, yeah, a lot of that this season is brilliant. Uh, we, of course, are just about to see Cass, Spencer, Tash, and fucking Wu return for Cambodia. Um, yeah, oh God, it pains me to say that that it's even possible. But uh, this will be an interesting question. Then iconic player, Julian, I think I know who you're going to answer. It's got to be Cass. Tony. Colin. Mm, it's such a toss-up because there's three that are really close, but just so that we can get all three names out there, I'm going to go with Spencer. There we go. Spencer got some love. All right. San Juan del Sur. You know I fucking love this season. Noah and I spent a good part of the entire season just defending the shit out of it. And I, I feel after Worlds Apart, people have uh, liked this season a little bit more. Uh, Ed, between September and December 2014. 18 castaways. Originally meant to be 20 because Blood vs. Water, the twist returned. First time that we had it, though, without any returning players. And uh, sadly, we lost two players right at the beginning. So and do Kim. Of course, we would see so 
so returned for the next season. But uh, that means that we had an uneven spread between men and women. Uh, filmed in Nicaragua, in Salman del Sur, funnily enough, we returned back to Nicaragua. And uh, the winner of this season, Natalie Anderson, she defeated Jacqueline Schultz and Missy Payne 5 2 1. Uh, Kate, let's start with you. Samuan del Sur. Yeah, I was. I thought that they brought the blood versus water thing back way too soon. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much with, you know, new people. I didn't love the cast. I didn't think it was all that interesting. If Natalie hadn't have won, I think I would probably put this right down there with South Pacific, but it's slightly above. Okay, Julian. Yeah, the tagline for this is like should be something like not as shit as you think because it's really not <laughs> like it's it's got a lot of um pretty wacky shit going on and like the cast is a little bit shit that's granted um but no. there's some there's some okay in there i like the fact that there's a um less females but then there's an all female final three that's pretty cool um natalie's an awesome player um and i think she's just as good as mike if not um better but uh, that's a controversial subject. But um, yeah, this this is just there's a few problems with it. It did get a little bit boring, but it, it picked up post merge. And to be honest, it's a lot better than um, in the seasons from twenty one to thirty. A lot better than many other post mergers. So yeah, Colin. Yeah, I'll agree. It's not the worst season. Um, it was a huge step down, and I'd be interested to see how people would have viewed this if it aired after, say, One World, because I think it was just coming off of Blood vs. Water and Kagaya, and it was so different. Uh, it, I don't think that there's a problem with having it, the Blood vs. Water twist come back so soon, because there are other twists that they reuse. I mean, Vanuatu reused the Men vs. Women twist, uh, but it was just the wrong cast for the twist because I think that this could have really worked well with all new players. I just don't think that the cast really worked that well and I think there was some unpleasantness this season. Uh, a lot of it surrounding Rocker but also how people kind of went overboard with the whole Rocker thing. Natalie is amazing and I think she makes this season along with some others like Jeremy and Josh but uh, overall I'm just not that huge of a fan of it. Love this season. Love this cast. So jealous of you, Colin, that you got to do a podcast with the Twinnies at the same time. Uh, my <laughs> favourite recap of all time that we've done on this show, and I wasn't even involved in it. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, we our longest Ozcap came from this season, three hours and 50 minutes, I believe it was. Um, and just gush, gush, gush. I fucking love this season. Um, Keith, Jeremy and Kelly, we're about to see return for Cambodia, uh, which is fascinating. I remember having debates with Noah saying that I don't think anybody would ever return from this season because CBS didn't particularly like this, but we've got three coming back, so yay. Uh, iconic player, Julian. Um, Keith. Kate. Keith. Colin. Well, Natalie. <laughs> Natalie. Um, all right. Well, actually, we've got one more season to go. We're only 15 minutes over, and I'm, I'm considering that a win because people probably <laughs> thought this was going to be a four-hour episode. All right. 15 hours over. Come yeah, on. Yeah, well, exactly. All right. Worlds Apart, season 30, the most recent season, uh, well, at least at the time of recording this, uh, of course, aired February to uh, May 2015, filmed in San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua, 18 castaways. Again, three tribes split in into white collar, blue collar, and no collar based on uh, the contestants' jobs that they uh, had going into it. And um, season one by Mike Holloway, of course, defeated Carolyn Rivera and Will Sims 2, busting out 6 1 1. And um, yeah, still very fresh in our minds, of course. Julian, worlds apart. Yeah, I liked this season a lot more than other people do, I think. Um, I think it had one of the best casts we've seen for quite a long time. Three tribe format was pretty exciting. There was lots of twists. There was probably it, it didn't go as you thought it would with, you know, the blue collars really sticking together. I mean, I won't get too much into all of that, but um, it was good. Yeah, it was it was pretty pretty happening sort of season that and the drama was made it fascinating in my opinion. Colin. It's probably a bottom five season for me, but I don't hate it. So it's it's sort of just on the the verge there. I was really into this season for the first two episodes. Uh, I was convinced it would go on to become one of the great seasons. And it just got really nasty from that point on. And 
it, it's still kind of a, I'm interested to hear a lot of these interviews we're starting to get with the the people from this season because I don't understand how this this cast is so tight apparently because they treat each other like garbage on the season and uh, sometimes you can watch that and you can take it away because the game is good, but this time it just sort of was too much for me. Okay. Um, yeah, this season, I think my problem with it was, like, a lot of the people that ended up doing well were from Blue Collar, and I didn't particularly like any of them. Um, they were all just so negative and ugh. But, I mean, it had some interesting characters, but overall, it's it's not my favorite. Top 10 greatest character of all time, Rodney. Just got to fucking mention Rodney and his itchy beard and fucking he's got a reality event coming up called Rodney Bowl. How can you not love that man? Um, we're about to... I'm just shouting at people now. Um, <laughs> we're about to see Joe and Shireen return uh, for Cambodia, of course. Um, Carolyn was absolutely fucking robbed. Of not returning, and Max, of course, didn't make it. And Mike, well, he was on the list, but um, he won the season, so, of course, he couldn't come back. Um, all right, iconic player. Let's go with Colin. Well, I'm just going to really quickly say first that this season, one of the interesting things about it is that with every character, they are memorable for both positive and negative reasons. And sometimes that's a good thing in Survivor because you can't always have clear-cut heroes and villains. Uh, for that reason, I'm going to go with Dan because I think he's right down the middle, positives and negatives. Okay. Well, since I'm her favorite player, um, I'm going to say Jen Brown. <laughs> 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 oh, God, how do we not talk about Kate at all? Like, what a fucking brilliant player she is. Uh, Julian. Uh, Mike has okay. to take it. Okay. Well, look, before we close it out, future and all that, just quickly again, uh, we talked a lot about the returning players and what players return for future seasons. Still interesting, after 30 seasons, uh, that there's only two seasons that have not had a returning player from, in terms of an original returning player, Guatemala and Karamoan. So um, I think that's a pretty good spread. Say what you will about the travesty of Guatemala not having anyone return, and probably who gives a shit about Caramon. But um, I shouldn't say that. There's some good people we'd like to see return. I think that's a pretty well covered off spread that they've managed to get 28 out of the 30 seasons having returning players. Just a bit of an editorial note there. Okay, uh, let's close this out. The future. The future of Survivor. What do you want to see for the future? How long do you think we're going to be around talking about Survivor into the future? Let's start off with you, Julian. Well, I, want, I know what I want to say. It's not what I will say, but I'd love to see more locations. I'm thrilled that they're going to somewhere new, at least, for 31. Um, I think the signs are looking good right now for Survivor. Um, the fact that there was apparently 10 million ballots voted for the second chance, that people were invested to, you know, select 10, 10 of each um, and sign up and do the whole fucking website thing, even though... You could vote multiple times. I still think it's a very positive sign, and the fact that um, you know that they're, they're still—I mean, the old cast members still want to be on it as well. So it sort of has built itself such a reputation now that it's self-sustaining almost. Like the the fact that the the fan base is really really loyal, um, and they are still getting, I, I think, new people. Um, maybe not that many, but. Look, I reckon it's got at least another 10 seasons in it, so um, let's hope for more. But, you know, if we get 10 more seasons, which is only five years, and we all know how quickly that can go, um, I'll be pretty happy. Kate? Yeah, I I think it's going strong. I think as long as Probe stays in, it'll go on because it's just too easy not to. Um, I hope it goes on for longer. I think the second chance thing is a really great idea, getting the fans involved and everything. So hopefully they they keep it going. Colin, they know how to change the show when it needs to be changed, and they know how to not change things that don't have to be changed. And people can criticize all they want, but again, compare it to the other reality shows of its time period. Very little has changed about Survivor, and it's still popular. And I, I wouldn't see it as being unusual for this to go another thirty seasons because. It, if it tanks on network TV, I mean, this is the type of show that could easily survive on cable, and uh, it should. Tropes is probably the only thing that would stand in the way of this going for another 30 seasons. As far as what else the show should do going forward, there's really only one thing. That's just Stephanie Valencia. Get her back on the show. <laughs> Yes, should uh, Propes leave Stephanie Valencia for next host? Uh, there you go. 
Yes, uh, I'm sure that would work. Or Dan Kay, uh, take your pick. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we've done well. 22 minutes over. I'm, I'm calling it a win, folks. Good job. I, I think uh, Noah laughed at me when I said that I was going to do this in two hours. He's like, no, you won't. You won't do it in under three. Well, fuck you, Noah Gross. We've done it in uh, two and a half, basically. So, um, yeah, in your face. Uh, I want to thank uh, Colin, Kate, and Julian, each of you, for joining us here. Guys, thank you. Um, Colin, thank you. I'll do it individually like I usually do. That's a nice way of doing it. Colin, thank you. Thank you, Ben. You're welcome, Colin. Kate, great to have you back, and um, hopefully we can have you back more often in the future. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. And Julian, thank you very much. You've been very um, tame tonight as well. Good job. Uh, we've been on our best behaviour. We've been efficient and uh, it's been good to be here and let's hurry the rest of this off-season up. Yes, indeed. Uh, just uh, quickly, uh, thank you for everybody tuning in. Uh, appreciate it, your support, um, as we've not been around for 15 years, but uh, been around for a little bit of it. So uh, we always appreciate you uh, supporting us and tuning in. Uh, we've got plenty of uh, things coming your way on Survivor Oz. Now that you can probably hear us, uh, we're updating our feed and hopefully getting all that sorted. Apologies for all the delays, but we do have interviews lined up. Uh, we've got some overdue ones that we've got to post and repost and everything else in between. And uh, commentaries uh, returning next week. We're going to get into Vanuatu. We've done with All-Stars and uh, we're moving forward. And, of course, we're getting ever closer to Season 31, Survivor Cambodia Second Chances. We will be providing you with extensive coverage throughout, including weekly Topsies, weekly episode recaps with former contestants, and uh, plenty of everything else in between. Until we next speak again, my name is Ben. This has been Survivor Oz, and we will speak to you on the trains for hopefully the next 15 years or longer. Good night. Good night.